All right. All right. Good evening, everyone. We'll give it just a couple minutes for others to sign in. Uh, for those of you who are signed in, um, we might just be a minute late because we just finished up a six o'clock executive session. So we'll give commissioners just a moment to sign in. Uh, All right, looks like we are waiting for Commissioner Moody and Commissioner O'Connor. So I'll give them just another moment and then we'll get started. See our city manager is on.
Uh, City Clerk, have you talked to Commissioner Moody? I have, I have not talked to him. He was just asking how to get on the, um, the closed session, then I haven't talked to him since. Okay, okay. All right, well, I think I'll go ahead and get started and anticipate, okay, there's Commissioner O'Connor and hopefully uh, Commissioner Moody will join us uh, shortly. Uh, maybe city clerk, if you could check with uh, our IT team to see if they need to help Commissioner Moody. I'll also ask uh, Ms. Kane to follow up with him. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, well, we'll go ahead and call this evening uh, meeting to order. So welcome to our June 16th uh, City Commission meeting. Uh, we'll start with a moment of silence and then a Pledge of Allegiance before we go to a roll call. So if you would join me for a moment of silence. Thank you. All right now, if you would join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now we will go to roll call. So I'll turn to our city clerk. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner O'Connor. Present. Commissioner Ruppover. Here. Commissioner Lanier. Present. Commissioner Isasi. Here. Mayor Bliss. Yes. And we're waiting on Commissioner Moody, if you know that. Yep. Hopefully he'll he'll join us uh, shortly. All right, next I would like to introduce uh, uh, our translator tonight, Ms. Lilybeth Perez. And before I do that, for those watching uh, who want to make public comment, I'll share with you how to do that. We have two opportunities for public comment tonight. The very first one, which we will get to shortly, is on items that we're voting on tonight. Uh, and then at the end of the meeting, we'll have an opportunity for public comment on other issues. And so uh, if you wanna call in to provide public comment, you can call 456-3000 or 311, and you hit number one. Uh, for the first opportunity for public comment, you would then hit the prompt one. Uh, and then for the second opportunity for public comment, you would hit prompt four. So it's one or four. Uh, there's a couple uh, expectations we have. We ask that you share your name, the city that you live in, and we'll provide you with three minutes. Uh, to provide input and to hear your um, thoughts. For the first public comment period, we ask that you explicitly uh, identify what item that we're voting on that you're referring to. So that's the only unique part of the first opportunity for public comment. Uh, so I'll turn to uh, Lily Beth Perez to welcome you uh, and let you know how to utilize our translation services if you need them. And I'll ask Lily Beth to also share how people can call in for public comment. Thank you, Mayor Bliss. If you need interpretation services in order to address the city commission, I will be able to assist. You have to dial 616-456-3000 uh, and you can select option number one or option number four, depending on the option that you'd like to speak on. Si necesita de servicios de interpretación para dirigirse a la comisión de la ciudad, estaré disponible para ayudarle. Marque el 616-456-3000 y seleccione la opción 1 o la opción 4, dependiendo en la que desee hablar. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Perez. Um, so we'll open up the first opportunity for public comment. And again, these are on agenda items. So that's items that we talked about earlier in one of our meetings where we voted. And so on our agenda, you'll see a list of those items under four different committees. So we have Committee on Appointments, Fiscal Committee, Community Development Committee, and Committee of the Whole. Uh, so if you are interested in commenting on one of those items, you can call 456-3000 or 311 and hit the prompt number one. and then. Um, prompt number one after that. And again, we ask that you share your name, the city that you live in, um, as well as the specific item that you're referring to. And I'll turn to our city clerk to let us know if there's anyone in the queue. Okay, Daniel, is there anybody in the queue? There are no callers in the queue for topic one. All right, Daniel, why don't we just give it uh, about 30 seconds? Okay. And we'll see if anyone calls in.
Oh, we have one caller that just joined. Okay, let's go ahead and allow them to speak. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your computer? I, sure. Is that better? Uh, if, if you could mute it. You got it. Okay, thank you. You have three. You, you have three minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. Is Chief Payne there? Is Chief Payne part of this meeting? Uh, I'm not sure, ma'am. Okay. Well, I would like to say right right off the bat that I am here for to to basically have his back. I have faith in Mr. Washington because I know that he will do the right thing. But I think that defunding the police department is a big mistake. Right. Have, oh, I'm sorry. Before I, I forgot completely, my name is Lori Yonkers. I live on the west side of Grand Rapids. I live at Mount Mercy Apartments, which is on Bridge Street. Lori, I'm going to pause your time. The mayor, uh, the mayor would like to say something. So, Lori, this is an opportunity to provide feedback on items that we're voting on. Is there a specific item that you wanna that you wanna talk about? Yes, defunding the police department. Oh, okay, that wasn't on our agenda today to vote on. Um, so we did okay. have a, we did have an update okay. this morning, but it, it, it's not an agenda item. Okay, all right, because the, the reason that I called in, I saw a piece on Channel 8 News about the fact that uh, one of the commissioners felt that this would be a good idea, and I just wanted to voice my concern about it. Okay. Respectfully. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Yonkers. We appreciate that. Uh, by the way, I'm Lori. Mrs. Yonkers is my mother. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Lori. Thank you. That's okay. That's that's fine. But um, all right. Well, then I guess I don't have anything. I would I would like to say one thing though to Mr. Washington. Keep up the good work. I have faith in you. I think you will do the right thing. I just wanted to say keep up the good work, Mr. Washington. Other than that, I guess unless you're voting on defunding the police. I have nothing more to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Uh, yep. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. All right, Daniel, is there anyone else in the queue? There are no more callers in this queue, Mayor. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that opportunity for public comment, and that will take us to approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Can I get a motion? So moved. Bart. And supported commissioners, do you have any questions or comments about those? All right, I'm to the city clerk to call for the vote. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. yes. Commissioner Moody? Oh, sorry, he's not on yet. Commissioner Sassi? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. And Mayor Bliss? Yes. Uh, next, that, commissioners, that will take us to petitions and communications, and we have 16 of those tonight with a, a few that were added on. Uh, so I'll turn to our city clerk to read those. Yeah, and also, I'm, I'm, Commissioner Moody is having technical issues from home again, so um, if Doug Stark can reach out to him. Great. All right, um, petitions, number one, communication received from Marcus Choi expressing support for the Hashtag eight can't wait campaign. That is received and filed. Communication received from Michael Dondeville the second expressing support for the hashtag eight can't wait campaign. That's received and filed. Communication received from Tennille Harkness regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department and the response to recent protests. That's received and filed. Communication received from Jolanda Howe expressing opposition to the implementation of a curfew and state of emergency. That is received and filed. Communication received from Chelsea Bayshore regarding policy changes in reference to police brutality. That's received and filed. Communication received from Eric Zepniak regarding rental housing policies, the use of body cameras, and the evacuation of media. That's received and filed. Communication received from Morgan Bengal regarding movements to end police brutality. 
That's received and filed. Communication received from Aaron Repley regarding police policy changes in reference to police brutality. That's received and filed. Communication received from Colin Dick regarding policy changes in reference to police brutality. That is also received and filed. Communication received from Brianna Scobie regarding police changes, review boards, and funding. That's received and filed. Communication received from Anthea Mitchell regarding police defunding. That's received and filed. Communication received from Don Lee regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department budget. That's received and filed. Communication from Cassandra Wolf regarding their resignation from the Community Relations Commission. That's referred to our Committee on Appointments. Communication received from Jordan Scanella re expressing support for the hashtag 8 Can't Wait campaign. That's received and filed. Communication received from Allison Vanda Walker regarding Grand Rapids Police Department policy changes. That's received and filed. Communication received from Yolando Jol Howe, Grand Rapids Homes for All regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department budget restructuring and accountability. And that is also received and filed. All right, Commissioner Madam Mayor. Yep. Point of order. Before you go to the next item, I received over 2,500 emails related to um, the Grand Rapids Police Department policy changes and or funding. So I see some of them here, but I don't obviously see all of them. And I don't know. I know city clerks, sometimes you'll put, you know, we receive X number of multiple communications. So I want to make sure that on record, we have some record of the countless emails that we've received regarding that. And I don't know how you do that and when, but just didn't want it to be. Well, these are ones that came through my office addressed to the city commission. So the ones that get addressed to you, but don't get me, then I don't, I don't always get all of those. So, well, so, and I can tell you that I have no intentions on forwarding all 2,500. <laughs> Yeah, so Commissioner, that's a good point. There are times where we all get communication on a similar topic and it's sent directly to our email boxes. And I know, like all of you, I've received um, thousands of emails and it's been challenging to stay on top of that. Uh, but if they don't go directly to the city clerk to go into the formal record, then those just are for us to respond to. Okay. Yeah, thanks. It's a very good point though. Uh, all right, next that will take us to reports of city officers. Uh, the first one is a controller's report for the period of May 21, 2020 through June 3, 2020, in the amount of $15,278,857.04. That is received and filed. Uh, the quarterly investment report for January through March 2020. That's received and filed. And the treasurer's report for the period of May 16, 2020 through May 29, 2020. And that is also received and filed. All right, commissioners, next that will take us to our consent agenda. Uh, so for those of you who are watching, our consent agenda are items that we uh, talked about and voted on earlier today in one of our standing committee meetings uh, where there was unanimous support. So with one voice vote tonight, we'll adopt those items. So can I get a motion for the consent agenda? Come on. So moved. All right. moved and supported. Commissioners, any questions or comments about the consent agenda? All right. All right, I'll turn to our city clerk to call for the vote. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Usasi? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. All right, that will take us to items removed from consent. And we have two items that are removed from consent because of a split vote this morning uh, during our Committee of the Whole. Uh, and so I'll Turn to our city clerk to read the first one. The first one is a resolution providing for the publication of a proposed ordinance to amend chapter 105 marijuana related municipal licensing for the purposes of advancing social equity and updating environmental sustainability, sustainability reporting requirements. All right, thank you city clerk. Uh, do I have a motion? Move. Support. All right, moved and supported. Uh, Commissioner Report, you wanna tell us about this one? Yes, Mayor. So this was one of the uh, the four items that we discussed this morning that were that came out of the recommendations from the Cannabis Justice Work Group. And this is the licensing ordinance. The uh, the reason why it was a split vote is because it was amended on the floor. Um, to, um, uh, while we were while we were discussing uh, the the uh, the ordinance, it does add some environmental 
and sustainability, and then the amendment uh, in, includes the word retailer uh, uh, in section 7.3791B. Uh, so it allows for those approved as medical marijuana um, facilities um, be able to application beginning on July 20th and uh, along with with others. So that's uh, that's the ordinance that we discussed. It's around licensing. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, commissioners, we uh, make the conversation about that this morning. Uh, any questions or comments? I see Mr. Canfield is on as well in case we have specific questions uh, for him. So, or, uh, Mr. Canfield, thanks for joining us. Uh, Commissioner Lanier. I'll just briefly say I am very appreciative of the work um, that the internal staff put together with um, their recommendations regarding equity and um, the reason that I am not supporting this is because it did include um, retail for recreation. And um, as we thoroughly discussed this morning, um, we had communicated to the public that any um, retail establishment for recreation would come back before them. And this would avoid us from honoring that um, commitment to the public. So that's why I'm not supporting that. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, commissioners, any other questions or comments? All right, I'll turn to our city clerk to uh, call for the vote. Um, Commissioner Isasi. No. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. No. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. And city clerk, has uh, Commissioner Moody joined us? He has not. I'm not. I'll go as soon as, we, as soon as we take this. I'll go see what's going on. All right. I thought the city manager had said he was going to call in in case he couldn't join us. Um, yeah, we're trying to get him to call in there. Okay. All right. All right. So it, it passes, and that will take us to our next item removed from consent. And this is a resolution rescinding city commission policy 900 57 marijuana park. Can I get a motion? So moves. Support. All right, moved and supported. Commissioner Jones, you want to tell us about this? Yes, Mayor. Uh, as adopted, the city's marijuana ordinance required marijuana facilities to have a 1,000 foot separation distance from any public parks or playgrounds. Waivers to the separation distance requirement may be offered by the owner of the sensitive use and approved or denied by the Planning Commission as part of the special land use process for those marijuana uses, uses requiring such approval. For publicly owned parks or playgrounds as a city is owner, a waiver of the required separation distance would be reviewed by the city commission and the commission may decide whether or not to object to the granting of the requested waiver. The marijuana parks waiver policy was adopted by the commission on December 4, 2018 and was amended thereafter to clarify its provisions. Since that time, the city commission has held public hearings and decided whether or not to object to the planning commission's granting for 10 park waivers requests. The city commission chose not to object to seven such waiver requests, but did object to the planning commission granting park free waivers. The planning commission generally decided in favor of the city commission's recommendation, except for denying one park waiver request where there had been no objection and approving one request where the city commission had objected. Thank you, Commissioner. I see Ms. Turkelson is on. So I, I think I'll move watching. I know we had a lengthy conversation about this, um, these multiple items before us tonight. But I want to I want to clarify a couple things. Uh, and that is that uh, we will be spending our both meetings in July with additional conversation uh, around recreational marijuana. And there are a number of outstanding issues that we as a body need to um, talk about more thoroughly, including um, waivers in general, distance requirements, sensitive uses. And so for those watching who have concerns about those items, uh, we will be talking about them more through a deliberative process uh, related specifically to micro businesses and um, other recreational uses uh, in the next two meetings. So I just want to clarify that. Um, and then I'll, oh, Ms. Turkelson, you want to make any comments? Uh, and then I'll see if commissioners have any comments. I don't think I have anything further to add. I think the summary was good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, any questions or questions? 
Commissioner Lanier. Um, just a quick comment. Um, we we're discussing this this morning. Um, in light of the significant edit that was made um, to the previous agenda item, I still feel the need for the commission then to um, allow the public to weigh in to us directly since um, they somehow seem to prefer to do that um, as opposed to the uh, planning commission meeting that happens during the day. Um, and so I just wanted, you know, though I am supportive of waiving um, or removing the waivers, I am more supportive of removing all waivers so that it can eliminate that tedious process for applicants as well as for um, the community who has found it to be um, challenging to navigate through. So just wanted to mention that. That's why I'm not supportive. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. Appreciate that. Uh, commissioners, any other questions or comments on this item? All right. Uh, City Clerk, if you want to call the vote on this. Commissioner Isasi. No. Commissioner Ruppert? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? No. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. It carries. All right, Commissioners, next that will take us to ordinances to be adopted, and we have three ordinances before us tonight. Uh, so we'll start with the first one. First one is the ordinance amending section one of the budget ordinance 2019-19 for fiscal year 2020 amendment number 16. Uh, Mr. Clerk, I would like to uh, I, I would like to move this item, but I would like to remove uh, from the consideration uh, um, item. Just one second, I'll tell you the item number here. Um, Item five. Are you sure what item five is? Uh, item five is the district court contingent account request elimination of the FY twenty twenty projected fund balance deficit. I'm we happy can to hear the birds, Commissioner. The birds. <laughs> my pretty hanging baskets out here. <laughs> All right, so uh, so uh, Commissioner O'Connor is gonna, uh, we're gonna remove that item so we can talk about it separately. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about it separately. I just would like to get the budget ordinance done and then I'm happy to talk about or take up the item five on its own if that's all right with the body. All right, so um, city clerk, do we have to make a motion to remove that item from the budget ordinance to talk about it separately? That's a good question, yes. Um, the, the, since he's the chair of fiscal, oh, it came it came out of fiscal this morning without a nay vote or a. But yes, I, I believe as a commissioner he can make a motion to approve the, the ordinance. But if we, if we have a the second or there'd be another ordinance um, to approve that one if that if that's so the case. I know it's a little confusing because this is a, this is a budget ordinance. That was recommended from fiscal. I say that, yeah, I guess he can make a motion to remove that. I supported the motion that he made excluding that line item. Great. So, uh, so do we need to do we need to cast a vote saying uh, that we approve of moving forward with the other items, but not that one? Let's move that one. Back. Uh, Commissioner Barge, so I can understand your motion. Your motion was to approve the budget ordinance and save number five. Yes, sir. Okay. And you had a second on that. Yeah. So would it be appropriate then, Mayor, even even before that, just to have a discussion before the the vote, and that way we can see if it actually needs to be a reworked budget ordinance or not. Yes, that sounds good, City Manager. Okay. So uh, I'll turn then to Commissioner O'Connor to talk about this and. Um, his desire to move that item uh, so that we yeah. can have a conversation about that. Thank you, Mayor. And um, I apologize to my colleague on the fiscal committee. This was something we were uh, stressed for time this morning, and I read this uh, and then I've been rereading it again for uh, about five times now. I, I, I thought it was doing one thing, and I have some concerns about uh, ultimately what uh, what is happening. So uh, the remaining items in the budget, uh, there's quite a few uh, budget ordinance items that are coming uh, up into play. 
two or three of them total have impact on our contingent fund balance. Um, so I'll just highlight those because I think those are uh, typically the ones that we get most concerned about. Uh, so number three is a stormwater department contingent account request to the Naps Corner Drain District. Uh, was payment for some emergency maintenance costs associated with that. So I think it's uh, absolutely an important system. Uh, um, our clerk's office uh, is requesting uh, $24,000 for August and November uh, mailings for absentee uh, ballots or absentee applications, not ballots, applications. Um, and so I think that is also an important uh, and, and reasonable use of our contingent balance. Uh, but when it got to item five, uh, our 61st district court you know, we've been uh, very critical of uh, some of the budget requests from the 61st District Court. Uh, I know as we adopted our budget recently, uh, they've worked on a plan to reduce some of their expenditures. However, this uh, request was for uh, $1.1 million um, to, uh, to help them uh, with a shortage in their uh, current budget, which I, uh, you know, I have some, some concerns about. And I, I think it, it uh, warrants further discussion and explanation uh, before uh, authorizing that, especially uh, with the full body, not just the fiscal committee, we've, we've I think we've all raised significant uh, concerns about the the cost of uh, operating the 61st District Court. For just just a just a moment, um, Commissioner Moody is in uh, by phone, so he's on the phone. He's muted, so, so he can weigh in if you have a question for him. Commissioner Moody, can you just say hello. Hello. All right, perfect. So, <laughs> okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Right. Mayor, I, I'm happy to begin to uh, respond to some of the concerns that Commissioner O'Connor has, has addressed, and I will ask um, our CFO to help me with the rest. Um, <clears throat> so, as you may recall, when we were approving the fiscal year 21 budget, uh, we had identified the courts uh, were having significant revenue falls from fiscal year 20 due to their uh, closure, or partial closure um, to COVID. And I think at that time they projected about a $2 million revenue fall, shortfall, which was about 34% of their budget. And we worked with them to try to remedy that, particularly for fiscal year 21, because they had not proposed any reductions. And I can't remember the exact number for 21, but uh, it was a significant reduction because they had implemented the work share program furloughs and other cost saving measures. But for fiscal year 20, um, that $2 million shortfall, I think uh, they had proposed reducing their expenses by 900,000 and doing other, um, doing the work share for this year for another 150,000 or so, but it still left the $1.1 million um, um, shortfall. And so I think when we proposed the budget and, and CFO can, can help me, we, we did that recognizing we would have to um, amend the budget for the 1.1 million and then next year, they would have a sustainable reduction in their budget. And I and, and Ms. Claren can help me with the numbers. Molly, are you on? Yes, I'm here. Uh, so with, with the court, when we uh, presented that, we had um, Mr. Secor from the court come over and explain their financial position. They're essentially, um, they have a revenue problem. Uh, what we're doing right now is trying to manage to that with holding back expenses, doing the furloughs, things like that. But in order to, be fiscally sustainable through fiscal year or to be to get to the point where we can position ourselves to be fiscally sustainable. Uh, this 1.1 million dollars is needed to close out this fiscal year um, as we head into fiscal year 21 as we said as we talked about in our budget discussions we're, we're looking for other things we can do currently that staff is going to be remaining on furlough for the next few months um, for for I believe they're just doing three day weeks. And then um, we're also looking at um, reducing our, um, sending two of the courtrooms back to the county side that we're not, we, we don't have the, the need for anymore. They have more of a need. So that's gonna uh, reduce the budget, I believe in an upwards of about 350,000 um, annual costs. So uh, we're, we're looking at things like that to improve the financial structure of that department and then again still looking at um, working with our partners at the state level to see what we can do to make um, 
this department be able to be, yeah, more more fiscally, um, you know, healthy long term. But uh, as far as far as this 1.1 million that's needed right now to replenish the district court fund, this is um, a part of our financial strategy. I've, um, you know, I, I encourage us to do that. We, we've we've had to do this in the past. I understand that, but uh, to get us through this year, just to, it's part of our financial plan for getting through the recovery as well. So, uh, Ms. Clark, can you uh, confirm the amount that their budget was reduced? from our fiscal year 21 adopted compared to fiscal year 20. Do you have that number? Uh, I, I can pull that really quick, hold on. Okay, and while you're doing that, Mr. Long, is there anything else that you would like to add about fiscal year 20? Well, in fiscal year 20, uh, I think, believe Molly, uh, Ms. Clarence already said that they're doing the uh, workshop program and uh, they've done what they can to reduce their, uh, their expenses in the current year. Moving on to fiscal 21, uh, they uh, found an additional $526,000 worth of uh, reductions that went beyond the 250,000 that they'd already found, which included um, a reduction in force through a layoff of 6.5 FGE, effective September 1, 2020, uh, and also to proceed with implementation of work share in the uh, and continue it through into fiscal 2021. Um, so they cut an additional 3.7% or equal 3.7% uh, from their preliminary fiscal plan level. And also, what we're going to do with the court is uh, pursue jointly um, the uh, sale of excess district court facilities to Kent County for circuit court use that could generate an estimated $400,000 in annual savings if we're able to uh, make that uh, transaction work. So uh, this, and those, uh, all that information was provided to city commission on, um, on May 21. Yeah, uh, I see uh, Commissioner O'Connor uh, raising his hand. I, I, I appreciate that, Air. I'll just say I appreciate that information and I know that we talked about this, but I also think that some of us were really clear that we weren't prepared to um, provide another budget amendment, uh, particularly because this has happened multiple times in the years past, and there doesn't seem to be uh, a, a hard look at the court budget along with other potential court reforms that could reduce their overall expenditures. And so uh, I appreciate that, that reminder of our conversation in May, but I think it's still, several of us still are very concerned about supporting this request. So Commissioner O'Connor. Yeah, thank you again, Mayor. Uh, I mean, also in the budget ordinance, it's mentioned that it uh, they want to provide significant reserves. Uh, so budgeting money out to put into a reserve doesn't seem like an appropriate or necessary use of uh, uh, money at this point in time. I understand that, you know, the court was uh, reduced in its operations, therefore it's collecting less revenue. Uh, but then would, would you, could I not assume that people are going to, uh, as the court reopens and people begin coming back through the system that they're going to the revenue will regenerate itself in some capacity. There'll be other, there's an, a, a lag from, uh, past caseload where people will have to, uh, be responsible for fines that should uh, help balance this out. That could occur, but yeah, yeah, that, that, that's certainly not what we would want the incentive to be for running the court. Um, let me ask, uh, let me ask, uh, uh, Mr. Matthews, where, where are they on um, implementing their work share and furlough programs, and, and are they on target with the plan reductions that they've made? Ms. Matthews, can you come on, please? Yes, sir. I will check. Uh, I, I put a message out to Mr. Secor. I haven't heard anything uh, back, but that was just, uh, well, today's Tuesday, right? So it was just yesterday. So I can uh, check in with him. My understanding was that they were they were moving forward, but I'll reach out to uh, Mr. Deering because he was facilitating that process. So let me check in and I'll uh, shoot you a message what I find out. Uh, Madam Mayor, are there any, or Mr. City Manager, are there any um, uh, concerns with just postponing this until our next meeting? And, uh, you know, we can find some more answers to these questions. 
I, I asked that question um, earlier. Can um, Eric, have you thought through the implications of not doing it today versus uh, the next meeting? Yeah, the um, I'll start and I can uh, assist. But as we explained in May, we're coming to the end of a fiscal year. So we'll end if we do not proceed with this uh, budget amendment in its current form or near current form, then we, the district court will end the uh, end the year in a deficit deficit position. So we'll be required then to file a deficit reduction plan and uh, that will take time. It has to be approved by Treasury. And in the meantime, uh, if we're issuing bond bonds or doing other financing or if we need to file continuing disclosure reports, um, it will show up in those reports and is um, um, a practice that is not uh, appreciated in the bond market. But those are my impressions. Uh, Molly can amplify um, Amplify that if she wishes. Sure. Um, this 1.1 million will just get us to adequate reserves, policy level reserves, and that's important for. I'm issuing the water revenue bonds tomorrow, so I'd have to check with bond council if I do need to make a declaration or pull the sale, just because we are changing. Um, you know, uh, some of the disclosures we made to, you know, in our bond prospectus, basically. So it, it does. Um, it does affect what I'm doing tomorrow. Um, also, just to follow up on um, the questions asked earlier, the um, the court operating fund is 905,000 um, less than last year. So um, in fiscal year 20, the budget was around 14 million. Um, for fiscal year 21, it's 13.1. So it's a $905,000 reduction. Um, again, the reserves that were we want to end the year with is just the, simply the policy level. Um, I don't believe it's any more than um, a couple hundred thousand, just enough to have a cushion as we adjust into the fiscal year 21, as we're implementing these new financial strategies to get, get the fund healthier, get the uh, revenues and expenses at a level where they're more sustainable. So I'm willing to um, check in at fiscal committee as we go along on that, um, you know, once a month or whatever you think is adequate as we go along. May, may, may I suggest um, a couple of things. If we can um, pin this vote just for, give us a few more minutes to do some follow-up and perhaps Ms. Claren can make a few calls. I know it's a little late, but um, I wasn't expecting the question this evening, but perhaps just before we make the vote, uh, take the vote and then come back with, with what information we have and that way you can have a, make an informed decision. Uh, Mr. Washington, I do have confirmation that they've implemented that work share plan. Thank you. Well, um, so, so city manager, I, ah, I'm, I, I am really struggling with this one, um, because I personally, uh, have, have been disappointed in court's ability to with the budget that we approve every year because of the multiple times that they've come back mid year at the end of the year requesting funding to um, fill a, a deficit. So we approve a budget for them and multiple times they haven't been able to live within that budget. And I appreciate the changes that they're saying that they're working on making now, but I, I'd like to have a plan. First off, I'd like to better understand the plan uh, as well as what are we going to do to hold them accountable so that we're not continuing to do this year after year and feel like our hands are tied because if we don't fill them out, then we're going to go into a step process. Um, so I, I'm just expressing my frustration. I know I did that during the budget process as well. Uh, but that's my question about supporting this today is that I wish that this is actually going to be a sustainable solution or that there's going to be accountability in them living within the budget that we approved in May. Um, let me go Connor, and then I'll go to Ms. Claren. Yeah, and I, I think for those comments, Mayor, I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, if we adopted a $14 million budget last year, but with this $1.1 million budget substitution, it's really a $15 million budget. So even though they agree to a cut of $900,000 out of their butt budget to get it to a $13 million budget, I mean, I just have this, you know, sneaking suspicion they're going to come back and ask us for $2 bucks next year. Um, 
because every year that I've been a city commissioner, uh, so this is year five, uh, they've asked me for more money. And so I just, I, I, you know, I don't have faith in the fidelity of the, the institution to be able to live within their means. And, you know, they, the world expects us to live within our means all the time as a municipality. In fact, I think we're constitutionally mandated to live within our means. And so, uh, you know, it's really hard to have control over something that we are budgetary responsibility for something that we have no actual ability to control. Uh, Ms. Claren, do you want to speak up and then or weigh in on this and then I'll turn to my colleagues to see if they have any other questions or comments? Yes, per the um, discussion about the deficit elimination plan, what we do is we file a plan to the state um, about how we're going to come out of a deficit and, you know, to do that, we have to use, you know, either fund balance or our contingency we set aside. So we could, we could do this, but I think we're going to end up in the same place, which is why I think um, moving forward, I would advise we do, I don't think it, I think it's very necessary to keep more of an eye on this, all of you, instead of having this discussion once a year when we have to pull contingent funds to keep them, um, to keep them afloat, we do some kind of monthly or every other month, I, I provide you an item letting you know where they're at and then we continue yeah. to adjust with them i think i think more oversight is necessary well well we've we specifically i the mayor and i have specifically talked to uh the comptroller about um doing a formal review of court operations uh to help us with uh that oversight and fiscal sustainability and so that that was one plan the other was um, the workforce analysis that, that Mr. Matthews was, was helping with Mr. Secor. So I think this year is a little bit different in that in, in previous years, it's been, okay, well, give us, you know, tell us what you're going to do. And then we come back a year later. We have talked about um, going in and being intentional and in, in, in having a both performance audit and a financial audit by the comptroller, as well as doing some other measures. But I, we obviously will respect whatever decision the uh, commission makes. I, I do, uh, my only concern is, is about the bond impact. And um, if it's gonna be made tonight, whether it's made now or in 20 minutes, um, it makes no difference. I just would like to know for certain um, what the implications would be on, on bond rating. Uh, City Manager, I'm going to go back to the question um, asked earlier, if we can put this off to July 7th and have a larger conversation with somebody from the court who can potentially answer some of our questions. I realize that is six days beyond the end of our fiscal year and the start of a new one. Uh, but I, I think, at least in my opinion, this is such a critical issue, and I think it's tied to some of the issues that we talked about this morning around reform and potentially we can tie both of those together, both the budget component, the changes that they're making, um, how we as a body are gonna provide more oversight in the budget. I'd like to know legally what what, what we can do um, around fiscal accountability, uh, and then we can have Mr. Secor also to answer questions. I, I think that would, of the options of ha having a denial versus delay, I think I would, uh, certainly prefer the delay versus the, the denial without all the, of the information. Okay. So I would, I would support that. Okay, Commissioner O'Connor, are you comfortable with that? Well, I just wanna know what the, you know, uh, well, they asked for $1.1 $1 .1 million, you know, 95% of our uh, budget items come through and they have a very specific dollar amount, uh, even to the penny sometimes about what is needed to accomplish the end game. And so when I just see a broad $1.1 $1 .1 million, it says there's some cushion built in here. Um, so if I can, and I, and I respect, I don't like negotiating with a gun to my head here, but I feel like, you know, the threat of, you know, we work really hard to, in our treasury department, our treasury office works really hard and talks every, every fiscal meeting about how well we're doing and how our investments are, uh, you know, outperforming most of our uh, peer municipalities. So, I, you know, I don't want to jeopardize the hard work that, that another department has done, uh, but I feel like, you know, if I have to, if I can give the court $438,012.18, and I know that will keep us out of deficit, then I'll do that, but to just give $1.1 million uh, with the fact that, you know, something's going to be a cushion that's just going to sit in the account and not get used, you know, a deficit means getting to zero. Uh, you know, elimination of a deficit means getting to zero. It doesn't mean getting to zero and then throwing some in the rainy day fund. Uh, and while they might have a, we might have a 
they might have a policy about how much they'd like to have set aside. Um, you know, uh, I don't not, not necessary. You know, we we've, we've operated under our target goal for many years until just recently. So, so the action then um, would be for the like, the budget amendment would pass with the one exception of item number five. That's great. Okay. Again, I can I can live with passing number five if I know what the specific dollar amount they need to not be in a deficit. Not one point one million dollars. What the specific dollar amount needed, so we can make sure that we don't you know we don't run afoul of anything or run behind any deadline. Yeah. yeah. I don't have that answer, Alan, but uh, again. My preference would be that we um, table this one item and that it comes back before us on July 7th at Committee of the Whole, where all of us can have this conversation and have all of the information in front of us. Um, Mary, Mary, I just want to add, we, we can't fix 2020 fiscal year 20 problems in July. The year closes June 30th. That also means I, we can't use um, fiscal year 20 contingency in um, fiscal year 21. So that means any kind of fix we do is going to be drawing from fund balance, which is, um, you know, it's altering the financial strategy. It also, you know, it, you know, we had a plan going forward, so it alters what we were going to do. Uh, dipping into fund balance is extremely rare. We don't want to you know, do that given we're going through a recovery right now. Um, we don't know what's ahead in fiscal year 21 either. So I, you know, I just want to make sure uh, you're aware of that as well. Okay. Um, can you give us a dollar amount? Can I give you, I'm having uh, Scott Sandin pull that right now. Um, okay, again, let's do, because let's do, Mayor, with, with all due respect, we have not had a chance to look into this um, with all of the amendment before the meeting tonight. I would much prefer if we allow our CFO, our deputy city manager, go offline, have some conversation, perhaps even call Mr. Secord, and we can still come back before the close of the meeting with what information we do know. And then you, the commission can make it, its, its decision at that time. Because we're, we're continuing to speculate and we need it. We need to get some 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 facts. And if we don't have it tonight, then I think your your best decision is is what you indicated earlier. If there there's discomfort, everything will pass with the exception of that. Okay. Madam Mayor, I move to table this uh, budget ordinance until later in the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a, a second for tabling till later in the meeting? Support. Okay. Uh, City Clerk, do we need to call the vote for tabling it till later or? Can we just revisit it? Oh, I can't hear you. Sorry, I got two mics going here. Um, yeah, so if we're in chambers, I would, I would, we would just be yes, but I, we're, we'll continue our way we're going. So, Commissioner, this is the motion to table till later in the meeting. Commissioner Repar. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Isasi. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Okay. I need your vote, Mayor Bliss. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, so the motion to table for later in this meeting is approved. Okay, thank you. All right, next that will take us to a consideration of a zoning ordinance tax amendment relative to payment of excess parking. Can I get a motion? A motion. Support. All right, moved and supported. Commissioner Sassi, you want to tell us about this? Sure. This, is, uh, this item for us is just related to the ordinance regulations and um, just to, to manage those inconsistencies, uh, discussing off street parking, uh, previously having a minimum and then moving to a maximum. However, we do not have the capacity as a city to require that. So um, this item is to uh, to, re to remove that requirement. Um, when, we, when this came before the planning commission, there was no public comment um, opposing this item. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioners, any questions or comments about this item? All right, I'll ask our city clerk to uh, 
Call the question. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Sassi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes, it carries. All right, commissioners, next, can I get a motion to suspend the rules? <laughs> Mayor, um, in light of all the discussion about uh, contingency and fund balance, what I would rather do on these next two items is just to delay those until the July 7th meeting, and we'll just take them through the fiscal committee. Um, uh, I, I'm sorry, Wait, Cindy, are you talking about item number three? Make sure. No, I'm sorry, Mayor. I'm I sorry. To say this is for the um, youth program that we talked about this morning. Yes, that's that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, you want you want us to hold off on this until July seven? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I can't see you. Yes, Mayor. We'll, we'll, we'll bring that back to the July 7th meeting and go through the normal process. Okay. All right, so we're going to pull that ordinance. And so, you, so you don't need to suspend the rules to consider this item? No, we'll, uh, we'll bring it back on the 7th. Okay. Point of order, Mayor. Yeah, yes. My number, my number three is a... Um, is a budget amendment. So is and my and then I have the resolution regarding the youth employment as a under the resolution. So is that budget amendment is the only thing under that budget amendment tied to the youth employment? So I have before me, and maybe the city manager can explain this a little bit more. I have two suspend the rules item related to the Grant 1000 program. One is the budget amendment. And then one is the execution of the amendments with community partners. So I have two separate items. So maybe the city manager can elaborate on this. That is correct, Mayor. What I am saying is I would prefer to uh, have those items just go through. We weren't able to have the discussion at fiscal this morning. And in light of all of the conversations we're having around um, uh, budget and contingency, I would just rather have that on the 7th, not tonight, at fiscal committee, and then it can come back to the full commission after it goes to fiscal. That's my, my request. I okay. apologize. Nope, that's okay. So I'll go ahead and pull that, and we'll have that go on the 7th. That's the budget ordinance related to the Grow 1000 program. Um, but city manager, under city commission resolutions, you do want to move forward with the uh, authorizing execution of agreements, correct? Um, can I, uh, Mayor, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was trying to call bond council during this discussion. We do need the budget ordinance related to the Grow, one, the Grow 1000 to be in place because we are ha we do have administrative costs now. We're going to start, we want the budget in place. It's an all years fund, so once we get it in place, it'll, um, it'll be able to fund that program, you know. And as we, basically, we were going to use um, this, fund balance, seed money, and um, have donations, uh, employer payments, and the CBDG funds to basically pay back this fund balance, you know, $750,000. So sorry to jump back in, but that's why we needed the budget ordinance um, amendment in there to get the budget in place in the other grants fund. I'm not going to fight about this one, Mark. <laughs> Say it again. Uh, I said I'm not going to fight about this one. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm all fought out today, so I'm just, <laughs> I'm just I don't have anything left in me. Okay, so, <laughs> so I'm I'm trying to catch up and make sure that I'm clear um, that one of the reasons you want this considered tonight is to um, move that eighty three thousand dollars from this fiscal year, um, what's left in our contingent fund, into this fund to help seed the initial. No. no. So no, we 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 um, eighty three thousand is what's left in our contingent fund. Um, that's how we'll close the year. Or at least that's that's the plan. Um, what we're doing is pulling seven hundred. With this item, um, 
this budget ordinance is requesting is putting budget in place for the GROW 1000. We're going to get that budget from pulling from fund balance, putting that money into the other grants fund. Our community's children is going to manage this. And while we, while we get the program going, we've already had some expenses this week. So that's why we want the seed money in place, basically. And as we get donations, um, Connie's going to leverage some of the CDBG dollars she has, as well as employer uh, commitments where they're going to issue us payment. We'll basically pay the city back for providing the seed money. Um, we also set the program up like this because you know, we want to get the program off the ground. There's an immediacy to it and also um, realizing that you know, this is a, a difficult time financially with, with um, dealing with COVID and everything that's happened lately. We wanted to put ourselves in a position where if we do upfront the money, we want reimbursement. So we're made whole. Okay. So I need to go back to the city manager and ask, am I suspending the rules to consider this item tonight or are we pulling it? Ms. Claire, you missed my earlier comments when you were on bond council, so we wouldn't have to do exactly what you did. I was perfectly comfortable with bringing this item back on the 7th, since the actual first week of employment won't be until that week and payroll won't be until a couple of weeks uh, shortly after that. So, again, I did not want to add further complexity, Mayor, to what is already becoming a complicated budget amendment discussion tonight. So uh, if, if um, my, my preference would be to wait until the following week, because there's a lot of questions that are surfacing now. So okay. I'm comfortable there's, waiting. Well, city manager, I'm going to follow your lead. Uh, you're the city manager. And so I'm going to pull this item and we'll allow additional time and have it come back on uh, uh, July 7th to fiscal committee. Uh, and then uh, city manager, do you want me to move forward with the resolution to suspend the rules? For the execution of the agreements with community partners? Yes, yes, Mayor. Okay, okay. So we're gonna, I'm gonna pull ordinance item number three at the request of our city manager, and that will come back before us on July 7th. Uh, and that will take us to city commission resolutions. And I will uh, need to suspend the rules because this is a walk on item tonight related to. Uh, execution of agreements with community partners for the Grow 1000 program. So can I get a motion to suspend the rules? Moved. Support. Okay, moved and supported. City Clerk? Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yep. Commissioner Moody? We didn't yep. have discussion, Madam Mayor. I'm sorry. We have a motion on the table that didn't give opportunity for discussion. This is suspend the rules. Suspend the rules. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Once, once we move, once the suspend the rules is passed, then I'll open up the resolution. <laughs> Commissioner Isasi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. Uh, now that the rules are suspended, and, and commissioners, I apologize, this is far more complicated when we are trying to do it virtually. So for those watching, I apologize if there's any confusion on your end. Um, so the rules are suspended now, which allows us an opportunity to bring forward an item uh, that was presented today. So I have a resolution authorizing execution of agreements with various community partners for the Grow 1000 Youth Employment Initiative. Can I get a motion? A motion. All right, moved and supported. Commissioner Moody, you want to tell us about this? Yes, Madam Mayor, that's a, it is exactly what you just said. It's an execution of agreement with various community partners for the Growth 100 Youth Employment. And then All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, City Manager, did you want to add anything to this? Or I don't know if uh, Ms. Heemstra is on the line. No, I have nothing else to add, Mayor. Okay. All right. So, commissioners, any questions or comments about this item? All right. Seeing none, I will turn to our city clerk and ask him to call the vote. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. 
Okay, commissioners, that will take us to public comment period. So I think I'll move forward with this um, to provide a little bit more time before we come back to the budget ordinance. Uh, so maybe city manager, you can give me a cue or let me know um, once Ms. Claren and Mr. DeLong have had an opportunity to gather additional information related to that budget ordinance. So I'll go ahead and move to public comment period. So if you're watching and you wanna weigh in on any other item uh, for the city commission tonight, uh, you can call in to 456-3000 or 311. You can hit number one and then prompt number four. Uh, and so I'll open up this public comment period. So I'll turn to our city clerk uh, to let us know if anyone is teed up to speak. Okay, looks like we have um, six calls in the queue is what I'm getting from my, from my email. Okay, great, go ahead. Bye, Okay, here comes the first caller. <laughs> caller, please state your name and the city you live in, and you have three minutes with the city commission. Can you please yes, mute your computer? Can. Hello? Hi. Okay, go ahead. You have three minutes. Great. Hi, good evening. This is Samantha. I'm a black resident of the first ward. I'm an alum of the Mayor's Youth Council and graduate student at Grand Valley. I was born and raised in the city. I'm invested in the city and I'm calling today to express my disgust with the city's handling of protests since May 30th. From calling in the National Guard to using pepper spray to disperse protesters, imposing a curfew and paying officers overtime to smile in our faces with one hand on their weapons. I don't care about the estimated $2.4 million in damage. I care about resident voice being heard. Mr. Washington, I'm very concerned that these closed meetings with quote unquote community leaders who were told not to invite anyone else did not include those most likely to come in contact with police. I'm talking about the exclusion of black people experiencing homelessness, black families living in poverty, black queer and trans youth, and those living in neighborhoods that are already over policed. And just to be clear, I do say black very intentionally and with a capital B. I'm very concerned with how you're ensuring black voices are heard from each ward. Commissioners should not have to be told to reach out to their constituents during this time and for future input, especially if you're getting thousands of emails. I know you're all exhausted, but we are too. Another concern I have is that police officers and city and county vehicles were used to block several streets downtown days after the riot and imposed curfew time. What exactly was the purpose and what buildings were they protecting? When I returned home shortly after the curfew, I was equally confused to see many folks in my neighborhood walking their dogs and carrying on outside while the supposed curfew was in place. I asked, who are these rules for and who are they protecting? I'll end by saying rest in power to George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Richard Brooks, Tony McDade, and so many others. Grand Rapids is a city that I love, but it's unfortunate to know that it's only a matter of time before we have a similar circumstance right here. Something must change. Listen to your black constituents and make real change. No increase to GRPD funding, body cam footage should be on demand, no questions asked, and no new cops. Increased presence is not a solution. For accessibility, I'll also share all these comments in the Facebook Live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. All right, others who wish to be heard? Caller, please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes with the city commission. Your time starts now. Hi there. Uh, my name is Tanner Ward. I live in the city of Wyoming. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank Commissioner Jones for his support of defunding the Grand Rapids Police Department. That means a lot to us. Um, I want to reiterate the demands of the town hall meeting on June 10th that a lot of callers called in to say that we reduce the police budget department to the charter mandated 32%, uh, that the charter be amended to remove the 32% threshold as soon as possible, um, that those reallocated funds be reallocated to public services at the direction of black-led organizations, and that the GRPD hire no new police officers um, starting now um, and continuing indefinitely until we can uh, defund the police department and figure out how we can implement community policing. Uh, the second thing I wanted to note was um, it's not appropriate or respectful to your constituents that um, apparently we had to contact the, the city clerk instead of the commissioners to have comments mentioned as a line item in this meeting. 
um, especially with the volume of emails that you said you got, uh, it just seems irresponsible um, at this point to try to to uh, obfuscate public comment in that way. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about was the chemical weapons used by the Grand Rapids Police Department on the night of May 30th. Um, the Geneva Convention of 1925 and the UN Resolution of 1993 both classified tear gas as an act of chemical warfare in a war crime. Uh, it can cause death, including in healthy people, such as one peaceful protester in Columbus, Ohio, recently was killed by asphyxiation due to use of tear gas. Um, and it's especially dangerous for unhealthy people who have existing respiratory conditions, uh, including COVID-19, uh, which we continue to be in the middle of a pandemic of a respiratory disease, and we're deploying a chemical weapon on our own civilians that induces coughing in a large crowd. Uh, additionally, it can also induce miscarriages in pregnant women. Um, so I was wondering if any of the commissioners can make a statement as to any ethical argument as to why it's okay to use chemical warfare on citizens of the U.S. but not in an international war. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Daniel? Thank you. Caller, please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. My name is Amy Carpenter. I live in the third ward of Green Rapids. I um, am a supporting member of Together We Are Safe uh, and the Green Rapids Area Mutual Aid Network. I'm calling to ask that the GLPD budget is reduced from 39% of the city's budget to 32% by July 1st, and that these funds, about $9 million, are reallocated to public services for communities of color, including trauma therapy and healing for decades of violence at the hands of GRPD. The Commission needs to start a process to remove the charter that requires any percentage of the city budget to be spent on police. GRPD must hire no new cops, not for community policing, not for oversight, and the GRPD central budget must be released to the public not to mention transparency for the FOIA requests that have been um, submitted over the last year. Um, of course, submitted a FOIA request and got pages and pages of blacked out, no information. There's no a community accountability for GRPD right now. Policing is not the answer. As I said, I'm with the Mutual Aid Network, and we are seeing the city let hundreds, up to thousands of people fall through the cracks with no support, no programs, no help, while we throw this money at the police who end up locking up people in jail um, that are actually giving them where they are getting infected with COVID. And, and we've actually supported these people um, who were locked up for violating a stay at home order. They were black and brown folks. They were not white folks, although we know that folks of all races violated those orders. And then they actually caught COVID uh, while, while in prison and now are stuck without working um, and are trying to make it. And the mutual aid network is trying to support them. That is a waste of money, particularly given the way GRPD handle themselves as a protest, the way they put property over people. Communities want to care for our schools. And as a white person, I want to support um, all direction of that money going to black and brown communities who know best how to use it and support that. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your three minutes starts now. Hello, um, my name is Matthew. I am a resident of East Town in Grand Rapids. I've lived in Grand Rapids for um, about five years. And I just wanted to call in um, to, to say that um, like, um, 
like many people, I've uh, been extremely um, disappointed in um, GRPD's response to the uh, protests recently. Um, and I um, have also been disappointed that um, the hundreds of emails that have been um, sent to the commissioners um, about reducing GRPD's funding um, that, that they, in fact, um, needed to be addressed to the clerk for uh, consideration. Um, I'm, I'm just also, I have a, a few things here that I just wanted to um, mention. I um, am calling to add my voice to um, sort of the chorus of people who are calling to reduce uh, GRPD's budget from 39% of the city's budget to the minimum 32%. And then I also want to say, um, which, and, and then reallocate the, not, the almost $9 million, um, or the, uh, around $9 million um, into, um, to, to put that into um, communities of color um, at, at the advising of um, community groups and leaders. Um, I uh, also am asking that the uh, the charter, which um, which uh, sets the minimum of 32 uh, percent of of funding, is immediately um, considered for removal, and that's removed uh, by the end of the year. Um, I also want to um, say as well, um, add to um, what a previous caller said. Um, demand that, that GRPD hires no new cops. Um, I think it's pretty clear that that is uh, not, not what we need right now. Um, and, and that um, GRPD's budget is also released to the public. Uh, it's been really difficult to um, try to get any sort of concrete uh, numbers, uh, any sort of uh, assessment of what's going on um, budget-wise. So, um, and, and then I also want to, um, yeah, just thank, Thank Commissioner Jones for um, for um, his um, for listening to our concerns and uh, and and for and for what he's had to say. So um, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Dan Daniel, real quick before you go to the next one, I'll just um, share with my colleagues and I'll follow up with our city clerk. Um, my office has been keeping a spreadsheet of all the calls and emails and the topics. Uh, and so I have it completely broken down and I'm happy to share that uh, with the city clerk and he can add that to the public record for our next meeting. Okay, here comes the caller. Caller, please state your name and the city you live in. Your three minutes starts now. Hi, my name is Erin Rapley and I live in the second ward 49th precinct and I'm a small business owner in the Baxter neighborhood. Um, two weekends ago, the GRPD posted a photo with a caption about how proud they were. I posted a question on the GRPD Instagram asking why a statement hadn't been made about the police violence taken against members of our community. Later that day, my comment as well as a few others were removed while other comments praising the GRPD were left up. After bringing this to the attention of several members of my community, I reposted my comments and others asked questions as well. The next morning, comments on the post were turned off. They have since been turned back on, but my comments were removed once again. I've heard a lot over the past couple weeks about how the GRPD is working on their transparency and accountability. Since I started following GRPD on Instagram last week, their following has grown from 1,200 to just over 3,000. Although social media is not a top priority for the GRPD, it is the only exposure a lot of members of our community have to them. Censoring comments on social media accounts of the GRPD is actively working against the commitment they have allegedly promised. I urge GR public servants to keep their social media platforms open and uncensored in order to maintain transparency and accountability. I yield my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, please state your name and the city you live in. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Muy buenas noches. Mi nombre es Ana Nelson. Soy de la tercera ward de Grand Rapids, Michigan. Estoy llamando para pedir 
que el presupuesto GRP se reduzca hasta el 39% del presupuesto. Disculpeme que le interrumpa, no escuché su nombre. ¿Puede decir su nombre nuevamente? Ana Nel. Good evening, my name is Anna and I live in the third ward of Grand Rapids. ¿Puede continuar, señora? Sí, claro. Estoy llamando para creer que el presupuesto GRPD se reduzca del 39% del presupuesto de la ciudad al 32% antes del 1 de julio y que estos fondos aproximadamente 9 millones de dólares se le asignan a servicios públicos para las comunidades de color, incluyendo terapia y I'm calling in today to ask that 39% of the police department's budget be reduced to 32% by July 1st and be assigned to public services or services addressed to communities of colors. Continue. Mm -hmm. Pido a la comisión que inicie el proceso para eliminar la carta que requiere cualquier porcentaje del presupuesto de la ciudad para ser gastado en GRPD debe contratar no nuevos policías, no para la policía comunitaria, no para la supervisión, y el presupuesto interno de GRPD debe ser liberado al público. Grand Rapids Police Department is not to recruit new cops or new employees in the department. No escucha la última parte que dijo, ¿lo puede repetir, por favor? Sí, la parte. La ultimita parte que dijo no se escuchó. Pues que he dicho que GIP no debe contratar no nuevos policías, no para la policía comunitaria, no para la supervisión y el presupuesto interno del GIP debe ser liberado al público. And we're also asking that the budget of the Grand Rapids Police Department be revealed to the public and no new cops or community cops be added to the department. Algo más, señora. Tiempo. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, please state your name and the city you live in. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi. My name is Chelsea Renaud, and I am a resident of the first ward of Grand Rapids. Um, I've reviewed the June 10th memo and I'm calling to echo the statements of the people's budget of Grand Rapids. Go ahead, caller. Thank you. I want to call for the city officials to publicly commit to reducing the GRPD's budget to, at the very least, the minimum 32% outlined in the charter. I'm asking that that funding be reallocated to public services for communities of color. I also want to express that rather than funding being used to hire three additional officers to the GRPD force, that these resources be directed instead to more impactful and restorative resources such as a mental health and crisis intervention unit. As a resident of Grand Rapids, I want more than empty promises. The people of Grand Rapids deserve and will demand remediation. The path to restorative practices begins with reallocating police funding for public services with the goal of improving public safety, community health, and quality of life in communities of color who have been disenfranchised and over-policed. I encourage the mayor, commissioners, police chief, and city manager to put action to the language from the reform memo, to put action behind their call to recognize the need to embrace new ideas, methods, and approaches that may have been discounted in the past. The pain our community is experiencing, particularly the pain of our black neighbors, is proof enough that the old pathways do not work. Your city and constituents are watching and waiting, and we will continue to demand accountability and justice. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, please state your name and the city in which you live. Your three minutes starts now. Hello, Mayor, Commissioners, and City Manager. My name is Bertie Duca de Tape. I'm a Black trans woman, a drag queen, currently residing in Grand Rapids. And today I'm calling to demand that the GRPD's 
budget is reduced from 39% of the city's budget to the charter's minimum allowance of 32% by July 1st, and that those funds, roughly $9 million, are reallocated to public services for communities of color. I'm also calling to demand that the commission immediately begin looking into removing that charter amendment, that the GRPD has no new costs, and that the GRPD's internal budget be released to the public. I'd also like to voice some concerns regarding GRPD's most recent activities regarding um, the Black Lives Matter protests, peaceful protests. Um, I was at one of those protests. Uh, I thankfully left before um, tear gas was involved. And I'm calling today just to voice concerns about the brutalization of black bodies, specifically black trans bodies. Um, and <clears throat> I'm calling today concerned, angry, um, and I'm going to try not to pass, um, but I'm fucking pissed, as I said, about the way that uh, our concerns are being ignored and pushed aside and infantilized and belittled. Why are we talking about budget for parking? Why are we talking about hiring city kids when Khalil Harris in 2000, was it 18 or 17, got a gun pulled on him as a child? It's embarrassing, deplorable, and um, quite honestly, it's honestly just unfortunate as a person who's trying to survive, to live, and to be happy um, like everybody else. Uh, to be denied that from the people that um, I pay taxes to. Uh, I find it very unfortunate that funds are being uh, reallocated to kill black bodies instead of celebrate black bodies. And as people who claim to be proponents of justice and claim to be passionate about those things, I know you have a master's in social work, so um, Mayor Rosslyn Bliss, to, be, um, to claim to be proponents of those ideals and then waste our time with this um, with this seemingly innocuous meeting about budgets and parking thoughts, it's insulting. Um, do better, and we demand the change now. Thank you. Thank you, Bertie. Caller? Hello, caller? Hello? Hi, yes. Can you mute your computer if you haven't done so already? Okay, uh, please state your name and the city in which you live. Your three minutes starts now. Yes, hi, my name is Karen Myers and I live in Comstock Park. Um, I'm not really sure where to begin. Uh, so many callers have said it's so much better than I can, but um, you know, there's, first of all, the thing about 1200 emails being sent, that's a lot of people who want to defund the GRPD and to like say anything about the fact that it has to go through the city secretary, the city, you're, it sounds like you're trying already to suppress our voices and this is all you should be talking about in this meeting right now. You should be only talking about the GRPD and you should only be talking about defunding them. Uh, there, a person who, when people turn out in the streets because of the brutality of police and the Grand Rapids Police Department responds with tear gas and pepper spray and shooting someone in the face with some sort of canister. That's horrific. Um, it was caught on tape and apparently one of the officers involved is, is on leave. You're wondering why we don't think that reforms will work. That's why. These police look into the cameras as they violently attack people, as they kill them, as they beat them, and smirk. And we're supposed to think that this can be, they can be reformed somehow. Policing is a racist institution. It came out of slave patrols. It cannot be reformed. What needs to happen is you need to start defunding the JRPD, taking away their money, and putting it towards things in this city that will actually help people. And I know that there are groups, because I know the people in them that are already doing mutual aid work and support work. They're supporting people that aren't being supported right now by the federal government or by the city government. They are helping each other. They are keeping each other safe. We don't need the police. They do nothing but harm us. So um, I yield the rest of my time, thanks. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city you live in. Your time starts now. Hello? 
Hello. My name is Leonard Van Drunen. I'm a resident of Grand Rapids. After 50 years of disinvestment, things started looking a little better for the Burton Heights area of Grand Rapids about three years ago when the city spent significant resources engaging with residents and over a two-year period developed both a corridor improvement authority and an area-specific plan. Both of these initiatives are designed to be catalysts for private investment in Burton Heights for the benefit of the people who live in our neighborhood. And the area-specific plan included a special emphasis on transit-oriented development centered around the recent $40 million investment in the Silver Line. The plan is inspirational, you should read it. However, the plan has come off the rails due to the activity of 15 or 20 citizens. These citizens have taken over our bus stops and retail sidewalks with daily, nearly continuous public drinking parties, public urination, public defecation, littering, aggressive panhandling, and more. In addition, we have some drug dealing, pimping, and prostitution in our city parking lots. What business is going to locate to Burton Heights when their customers' employees have to pass through a drinking party on the sidewalk or walk by some guy peeing in an alcove or step over some feces? Who's going to get off the Silver Line bus stop in Burton Heights only to be greeted by six non-rapid riders on the platform, one panhandling, one talking nonsense to her, one passing out, passed out across the platform, and one peeing on the platform? 10,000 people live within an easy walk of Burton Heights retail, but they're afraid to walk, to shop there. The business neighbors have come together to try to solve these problems. We've talked to the GRPD, we've talked to the fire department, some of our commissioners, the homeless outreach team, 311, 911, anybody who will listen, but it just keeps getting worse. We are, we are at a loss of what to do. We need your help. Please help us save our neighborhood from being destroyed by 15 or 20 persons who use our public property for their private use. Help us take back our public property, our neighborhood. I'm asking for four things. First, please allocate more of the city's budget to Burton Heights. Be ready to spend a little more money fixing this problem. Second, please select from the city's roughly 1,600 employees a few key persons to form a cross-functional team to focus on Burton Heights, to come up with creative solutions and with accountability for measurable results. Third, please change some city ordinances which will be needed to solve our problem. And fourth, please work more effectively with the RAPID to enforce better Silver Line bus station cleaning maintenance and security. Please help. We need your help. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you, Leonard. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city you live in. Your time starts now. Hi there. Go ahead, caller. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, this is Patrick Colehouse. I live in the second ward of the city of Grand Rapids. Uh, I had a whole thing prepared here, and then about six or seven or eight people all called in before me to say what I wanted to say uh, a whole lot more concisely, so I'm going to follow suit. Uh, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Jones here for his uh, proposal to reduce the funding of the Grand Rapids Police Department down to the uh, charter-mandated floor of 32%. I think that's a heck of a good idea, and I think that's a heck of a good idea. Um, because I was um, one of the people that was present at the big protest on May the 30th, and I was felt like I and the other people who were there with me were treated by the police like a hostile force. They showed up in their stormtrooper armor, they gasped the crowd, they provoked and escalated the destruction, and they were the chief source of destruction on that night. It wasn't the protesters who shot anybody in the face with a gas canister. It wasn't the protesters that induced any asthma attacks, potentially life-threatening in the people who were there. Uh, and I appreciate that the city is doing something to respond here, uh, but small steps that have been proposed so far, like the 8th that Can't Wait program, are not really anywhere near enough to address our actual concerns. One of those steps is to require warnings before using lethal force. Like, what were we doing before? Just shooting people in the back? Uh, and so the uh, changes proposed by uh, Commissioner Jones, by the other people who've called in are terrific. I might add a couple suggestions, demilitarizing the police, taking away the crowd control weapons, disarming the portions of the police that don't need weapons. Most police functions don't require a man with a gun to show up. Um, ending civil asset forfeiture so police uh, don't have a financial incentive to over-police people. Uh, ending police unions so officers have uh, the ability, so we can have the ability to actually get rid of officers who abuse their power. This is all stuff we can do at the local level, uh, and it's not enough. Um, and I know everyone, everyone who I can tell is involved is a decent person, but it's not enough to just be a decent person. We have to actively dismantle racist institutions like American policing. 
Uh, and I uh, wholeheartedly concur with the others who have called in to uh, echo that sentiment. Uh, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city you live in. Your time starts now. My name is Guillermo Cisneros, and I'm the Executive Director of the West Michigan Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I'm a resident of the city of Grand Rapids, and I'm calling uh, to advocate for the area of South Division and Burton Heights. Um, we um, moved the West Michigan Hispanic Chamber of Commerce location in June of 2018 to the area of South Division. And since that uh, time, we have been experiencing uh, uh, loitering, uh, panhandling, uh, people defecating on the streets. Um, uh, there is uh, uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, uh, prostitution happening uh, next door to our offices. And uh, unfortunately, all of these issues uh, have uh, uh, increased in, in the last few months. Um, we have uh, uh, programs that we're running to support the Latinx business community and uh, Latinx college students. And with all of these things happening, we are not able to uh, to to do our, 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 our work. You know, uh, we have uh, uh, guests that have been approached by by several of these people, and uh, in the the situation, it's it seems to be that uh, that it's out of control. Uh, we want to call the commissioners, uh, uh, the mayor, the city manager to to help us to fix this this problem. Um, we have uh, uh, people that uh, that stay in, in in the in the bus stops, you know, on on that uh, corner of Division and Burton, and uh, and for for some time now, um, every time that we want to get into the chamber or or or, or our people, you know, want to want to get into our building, uh, it's impossible uh, with uh, with the uh, COVID nineteen happening. Uh, there is uh, hygiene issues, uh, so there have been days that we haven't been able to get to our office. So um, I'm calling to uh, to ask for help uh, and to ask for investment in that area, uh, so we can we can fix this this problem. Thank you so much. Thank you, Guillermo. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please mute your Hello. computer? Hello. Yes. Yes. Is your computer muted? We were getting some feedback. Yeah. Okay, great. Please state your name and the city you live in. Your three minutes starts now. My name is Deborah Reese. I'm a resident of Grand Rapids, and I am a business owner of a Burden Heights building, and we've been there since the 1980s. I'm calling to echo the statements of my fellow Burden mm -hmm. Heights business owners with um, everything that they have stated that are problems in the area where we are. In the city parking behind us, behind directly behind the building, there's loitering on the property. There's aggressive panhandling as to where our customers are afraid to come do business with us now. If they want to come in, they're afraid, they come and they call us ahead of time because the people are panhandling and it is getting worse by the day. They're blocking the sidewalks, they're blocking their um, they're blocking them from being able to get out of their cars unless they give them money. The urination and the defecation on the sidewalks and the drinking and the drug use is getting worse. So I'm just calling to see if there's anything that can be done because we need help. We need more police presence. We need whoever there is available that we can speak to. We've tried every avenue that we can think of so far and nothing seems to be happening and nothing seems to be stopping the loiterers from being out there that they are. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Hello, caller. You're on with the city commission. Can you please mute your computer? Yes, I just muted my oh, computer. Thank wonderful. you. Wonderful. Go ahead and state your name and the city you live in. Your time starts now. Okay, my name is Marilyn Booker, and I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan. I live on the northeast side of town, and Joe Jones is my commissioner. Um, I've lived in the city for long time in my life. I've lived on this side of town for 25 years. I work with the Dispute Resolution Center of West Michigan, and I have um, over five years of experience of 
training and working with communities and schools about restorative practices and restorative justice. I was very excited that Brandon um, Davis became the person to help with some of the community um, issues that we have in our community and his talk about using restorative justice and restorative practices to uh, address some of the issues that you're, you're hearing tonight. I remember coming to a meeting uh, some time ago, I can't remember how many years ago, when the police um, the arrest was basically accosted some young boys and mistaking them for older or whatever they were mistaken for. And there was a lot of uprising in the city and people were very upset about that. I, in that time, approached the city commission in that meeting to say there is a, good, a better way and there is a good way to address the issues that our community is facing. People want their voices heard, as I've been hearing, as I've been listening to other callers who call in. I want my voice heard. I've tried to reach out to my commissioners. I have um, reached out to Mr. Davis. I have had the chance to have a conversation because we do the training and we work on um, building community. And I think that's what I'm hearing. People don't want more policing. They want peace officers who are going to work with them in keeping peace in their communities. And so I think there is a conversation that needs to happen between the people who live in our city, us people that live in the city, and the people who are, are the ones who are supposed to be keeping us safe. And having that trust has been broken, figure out a way to rebuild that trust. And restorative justice, restorative practices, whichever you refer to it as, it's pretty much the same process, does that. And I've offered our services to the city. I continue to say we want to be able to work with our city, our city officers, and our city commissioners, and those leaders in our city. And I have not yet heard that, and I'm looking for an opportunity to do that. So I'm asking and requesting for that opportunity to have that conversation, because I've never failed, and I've heard this from Chief Payne, well, you know, that person who did something wrong, that police officer got fired. Firing someone, as we all know, is not the answer. Firing a police officer for misconduct only gives them permission to go to another police station and to be able to get another job and continue in their ways, which we see in our world and our community continues to happen. We need to have people have a conversation to hear perspectives, to listen to each other, and to really act on what they're hearing, to come up with a plan that the people have input on and that the people who are in charge of the city have input on. A conversation is what needs to happen, in my opinion. And I'm, asking, and I'm reaching out and I'll continue to reach out because I live here and I care about the people who have been, their voices haven't been heard. And I want to hear, I like to hear everybody's voice. I know that we all have something to contribute to our community. Thank, Please, thank you, Ms. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name. Uh, Caller? Hello? Hi, yes. Can you turn your um, computer down, please? Yep. Thank you. Uh, please state your name in the city you live in. Your time starts now. Okay. Hello. I'm Natalie Martinez White. I'm from Grand Rapids. Um, I just want to address some tweets by Mayor Rosalind Bliss, such as the one on May 31st about the riots that occurred in Grand Rapids. Mayor Rosalind Bliss, the violence, chaos, the peaceful protests are unacceptable. This does not represent who we are or Grand Rapids. That's historically false. In Grand Rapids, this is an excerpt from A City Within a City, a great book about Grand Rapids. Following the racial unrest of 1967, the Grand Rapids Planning Division authored a summary report entitled Anatomy of a Riot. According to the GRPD, young, angry Negro males were the main participants. And this younger generation of blacks believe that actions speak louder than words and that he does not have anything to lose by being destructive. Mayor Rosalind Bliss mirrors these words because history repeats itself. Later on, she says, I am grateful for our police officers. As many people of color and other marginalized people in the community call for them to be abolished and defunded. She also tweets about the eight can't wait campaign. Police officers do things even if they are illegal. That's not enough. None of it, none of the centrist measures are enough. I have really bad social anxiety and it's really hard for me to call. But what you're doing is ridiculous and this was the best way to, re to reach you. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, Natalie. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name in the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Henry Pena. I live in Grand Rapids. 
I'm going to speak a little quick because I want to make sure I get everything in. So I've been in uh, Burn Heights area since 85. Uh, I've been in this fight that my neighbors have been talking about for a very long time. Uh, I'm part of a couple of or different organizations. Um, but to get straight to the point, I've had countless meetings. I've met with the city. I've met with the Rapid. I've met with Mobile GR. Um, trying to pinpoint who can help with the issue in Burn Heights. No one can. All everyone does is point fingers. So I, I really don't even know who to t turn to. So where I'm going to use this measure. Um, I'm unique in this situation because I own a pair of buildings right on the corner of Division and Burton, plus that uh, business that sits right on the corner there um, on the southwest side. Uh, so my customers, first they have to run to and from my door to their car because I don't even want to call this panhandling. They hang from their door. They're, they berate them. Um, so that's not panhandling. That's more like you know assaulting somebody to get some money. Uh, uh, on top of that, uh, the building next to it, I haven't been able to rent out um, uh, at all because as soon as any possible renters come and check that out, they see what's going on and they don't want any part of it. I also own um, some apartments there. Um, I've had the door replaced a couple of times. Uh, first, the door, you know, somebody broke it, no problem. I replaced it with a nice new glass uh a metal door and someone threw a bottle through it um and when they when they throw what their means is to get in they they then start knocking on apartment doors they start you know uh half harassing everybody and it's just I, I mean i have to run over there uh police do what they can but they can't do anything the guys are blatantly drinking i mean like the bottle is there like three or four bottles per person sitting there um, we constantly have to clean up. We're like in a fight or in a war over there, and no one wants to listen to us. We're we're constantly dealing with 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 the inebriated over there, and of course they've mentioned the 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 peeing and and they're defecating everywhere, and we are left to clean it up every single day, every, like every couple of hours. If you drive by there, you see it. I've called my commissioners twice, left messages have not got called back. I, I know I have an avenue where I can kind of reach out to, to a couple of because of one, because I know, but I wanted to use that measure to try and um, get a response. So um, please help. I mean, we're down there fighting and, and looking for help and have received none so far. I uh, yield my time. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. My name is Candace Pye. I'm out of the second ward. I have two sons, 20 and 17, two daughters, 11 and 8. I'm perfect for the conversation that I'm going to be discussing at this time. I have always been active with the youth in my community. Um, I have a lot of experience in um, providing them with resources um, and activities that they are interested in. So firsthand, I've been able to see that the children of my community, the youth, are experiencing a large amount of disappointment and the police department and the officials in our community that are supposed to protect and serve. One of the things that I think is very important as being a supporter of defunding the Grand Rapids Police Department is utilizing money to go elsewhere in the community. We have certain programs that are put in place that are supportive as a, a mentoring um, facility for our children. But what we don't have is many activities that can keep our children um, a part of the community in a positive way. Um, we don't have enough. We don't have enough of the people in our communities that are being responsible for our youth. Um, my goal for our community would be to see not people outside of our community coming in to be these volunteers and run these programs, 
but to have the people in the community um, be there as support to start our own um, mentoring programs and um, placing money for transportation to get to these places, um, having different services for our children's after school um, programs, access to um, computers and information, um, food, um, mentors, um, but people of um, people of their community that can relate to them. Um, I definitely feel like when dealing with the youth that we have took a very bad turn in direction. Um, our children are afraid of the police and they do not feel safe at this moment in time. As an adult, I don't feel safe either and I don't feel safe for them. We need more programs um, to help our children be successful. We need trade programs. We need, um, call we it, need, um, caller, that's three minutes. Thank you for okay, your time. Thank you. Uh, you're on with the city commission. Can you please mute your computer? Yes, uh, my name is Maury Fernandez. Uh, I'm in a Hispanic black, uh, live in Grand Rapids. And um, I've been, uh, first of all, all of you have a very difficult job. So thank you for your time. I know they're long days. Uh, no one condones what happened to George Floyd. Horrific. The murder by a police officer. But I've been hearing a lot about defunding the police. So at the end of the day, who's going to do their job? It's unrealistic that we're going to have people in the community, albeit how talented, to fill in that blank. And again, the job of policing is a very difficult job. And I, it's not a perfect science. I would say even if we have the perfect police force, it, there will be issues, there will be problems, there will be mistakes. And bias and racism is a matter that has to be in fact developed through education, through time, and you just can't throw community officers into an area and expect them to build trust or credibility or relationships. I grew up in the projects in New York City. I know racism. I know what it is. But I also know what it is to be mentored. And the people who mentored me early on were, lo and behold, police officers. And they guided me and they provided me the insight at the time. But they were within the community, and they had built the relationships and trust already. The other thing is that we have to be more inclusive. We have to include everybody in these discussions. We seem to basically ignore the fact that our communities, whether it's in Grand Rapids or elsewhere, are made up of everyone, white, black, brown. We have to be inclusive, and we have to speak truthfully. And I speak to our black and brown communities. And I can say this from experience, we have to be candid and accountable with our communities, with our families. We have to look at ourselves in the eye and we have to be truthful. We have a lot of work to do also. I would also add that in terms of where we're at and where we're going, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that it's unrealistic to go ahead and apport $9 million without a plan. What are we going to put the million, nine million dollars back into? We have to be very thoughtful. We have to be very mindful of what has not worked in the past, especially with our communities, and be able to build on things that are collaborative within the private and public sector. If not, it's just a motion. I want to thank everyone for their time, and I think we need to have, again, a candid, factual discussion devolving ourselves of too much emotion, which I understand why it's going on, and understand what the facts Thank are to move over. Thank you, Paula. Move That's on three minutes. Thank, Thank you. you. Paula, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please mute your computer, and your time starts now. Hi, uh, my name is Kelly McPhee. Um, my partner and I own two businesses on Wealthy Street, and we are part of the Baxter neighborhood as well. Um, 
I know there are a lot of people ahead of me who said the same thing. Um, I am in agreement that the city needs to reduce the GRPD's budget from 39% to 32%. Um, those funds need to be reallocated to public services for communities of color based on advising from community groups and leaders. Um, I also believe that GRPD should hire no new cops um, and that their internal budget needs to be released to the public. Um, I also had issues with the lack of accountability and transparency with GRPD's Instagram. They deleted my comments as well, and I think that it is the least they could do to create transparency and accountability to leave up conversations and comments on their Instagram, um, besides leaving the positive comments. Um, I also believe that the city of Grand Rapids needs to adopt the accountability plan that was proposed by the NAACP of Grand Rapids, Link Up, and Urban Core Collective. Um, and I want to thank Commissioner Jones for standing up to defund the police. Um, I'm expecting that our other city commissioners will get on board with that and we can make the adjustments and we can do it in an educated way and talk to leaders in our community to figure out where that $9 million is going to go. Um, and I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, can you please mute your computer? Hello. Hi, yes, you have three minutes. The time starts now. <coughs> Hello, this is Martha Cooper from Grand Rapids. I've been listening, uh, watching the meeting, and then listening to people's comments. I, too, would like to urge you to uh, reduce the police budget from 39 to 32 percent. Um, one of the, th I have been listening to a lot of concerns and, uh, people are on Burton and division are asking for basic policing, uh, peacekeeping kinds of policing. There's other things I keep thinking of is like, you know, if there was more trust between the community and the police, which is sorely missing, um, as the mom and, uh, youth activists pointed out. So I just look, if there was more, um, you know, trust, then there would be much more cooperation between the community and the police when it comes to keeping our neighborhood safe. Um, I have been talking about housing for years. I feel like when people call, they tell you everything that is of a concern, and you just suck it up and go ahead and do what you're doing. What you've been doing is running the downtown and making this a destination city. I'm sorry that the plans were ruined by the COVID thing, but up till then you had not really taken on anything with any real, over three years we've had a housing crisis. You said 80% of AMI, that's 36,000 or something like that. And one of my uh, friends, black friends has gotten up there and said, hey, most of um, the black families don't even make 25,000. So I'm looking at the whole big picture um, and I want that $9 million to go to the community. This community is starving for funds to be successful. The youth need it. The addicts need it that are littering the sidewalks. The homeless were served by no one. You closed their day center in the middle of a pandemic and gave them no place to wash their hands when you can water trees. I don't understand what your priority, I do really see what your priorities are, and they're not the people who live here. It's the infrastructure you cared about. I want the police department to take utter responsibility for every broken window as they started the whole assault. When I saw them set off all their sirens, I came running back into the room and said, what is that? All that was was escalation. They are responsible for the damages and they are responsible for the anger that this community has for taking their children down on the ground and pointing guns at them. We don't feel like you're listening. I don't trust the police and I don't trust City Hall. Demilitarize the police and you'll have more money. You don't need all that SWAT and you can call in help from the county Thank if you, you need to. Thank but this you, is Ms. ridiculous. Ms. Cooper. Thank you. That's three minutes.
Hello, caller. Yes. Yes, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. You're, uh, please state your name and the city you live in, and your time starts now. Hi, my name is Dan Hesse. I'm a resident of Grand Rapids Township, but I've worked and spent a lot of time in the city. Uh, I'm also a member of the Grand Rapids Democratic Socialists of America, also known as the DSA, uh, a volunteer with the Grand Rapids Area Mutual Aid Network, and a supporter of several of the immigrants' rights organizations in the city. Uh, some of what I have to say I wanted to relay during the last meeting, but I didn't quite call in time. Uh, I was present for the Black Lives Matter protest on May 30th, up until soon after I witnessed the Secretary of State building being destroyed. Since Saturday night, that night, I've heard a number of concerns about the businesses, and as one who was always raised to construct and not destruct, I was disappointed that it escalated to the point that over 100 of them were damaged. I do think, however, there has been a bias over the years towards supporting business over people in the city, along with the ideas slash projects of the rich and the powerful. Since COVID-19 began, I hope you learned just how vulnerable many of the people in our city are. With so many people now on unemployment, with the cost of housing soaring to nearly double what they were a mere seven years ago, and with the loss of so many good manufacturing jobs over the last 20 years, I hope that you really look into why many people are upset to the point that they're willing to go on rampages. While I am not an, an African American or had to face the struggles of many in our community, I've heard from many about these concerns from those who are facing obstacles or hard times over the years, but not so much during these commission meetings, as many who struggle do not have the privilege of time to research matters or call into these meetings. I'd like to agree with the people who have mentioned that the commission has addressed the needs of the police over the people. Initiating a curfew and bringing the National Guard in, to me, are also asked to doing this. I think a large share of our community would rather see you enact regulations on the plans of the ultra-rich families, of the bosses, Van Andels, and others with influence instead of making things harder on the people. While we've seen widespread protests across the country, I think the one here was unique and worse than the ones in Detroit, Flint, Ann Arbor, Lansing, and Kalamazoo for some of these reasons. To City Manager Washington, while I know you are a hard worker, your initial willingness to cut some of this funding for community police relations before the riot, and then afterwards for you to take the stance that the police should only get more funding has me shaking my head. I also hope you've realized that your decision to not listen to the majority of voices who wanted Officer Vander Toy fired was the wrong one. I would like to particularly thank Commissioners Isasi and Jones for their opinions during this time. And I'd like to add one more to the town who feel the upcoming budget should see funding for the police reduced to 32%. I hope you take my comments into consideration and become willing, become willing to try harder for the rights of ordinary, working class, undocumented immigrants, and the homeless going forward. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, uh, my name is Trenton and I live in Northwest Grand Rapids. I am calling because I want the GRPD's internal budget to be released to the public. On top of that, I request that the GRPD hires no new cops. I don't want to see any more of those uniforms. And I also am asking that the GRPD's budget be reduced from 39% to the charter, charter's minimum allowance of 32% by July 1st, and that those funds, approximately $9 million, are reallocated to public services for communities of color based on advising from community groups and leaders. I take my, uh, I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Hillary. I live in Grand Rapids. I'm calling also to add my voice to call for the defunding of the GRPD. Um, but I want to give just a couple of personal experiences that I've had. Um, it was years ago, but I was pulled over for speeding taken out of my car, frisked, and put in the back of a police car. Um, it was only after I had a female to go. And I know that is nothing compared to what a lot of other people have been through, but it was scary to me. 
I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, a friend of mine less than a year ago called 911 because she was suicidal. And two police officers were the first people to show up on the scene. And one of them was screaming in her face. Um, I also, I think what's happened in our state in the past couple months is the perfect picture of the priorities of our police department. I know GRPD wasn't involved in Lansing, but armed protesters with Nazi flags stormed the Capitol building and they were let in. Um, and I was there on the 30th in Grand Rapids, too. And we were met with police hiding behind barricades and riot gear and tear gas canisters. Um, I have in the past worked for a mental health crisis facility. I had a very brief de-escalation class before I began my job. I've been punched. I've never retaliated. Officers had water bottles thrown at them, and, and protesters were retaliated with tear gas. Um, I know that was given under the direction of the chief. Uh, mental health workers, nurses, social workers, we use physical restraint as the absolute last resort. Um, I've seen officers show up to a scene with someone who was experiencing a mental health crisis. We had already de-escalated the situation, and they only made it worse for her. I... I don't want to see my tax dollars going to that. I don't want to see people brutalized, murdered, harassed, and surveilled. I don't want to see that happen in the black and brown community, especially. Um, we know it happens at a disproportionate rate. So as a city, I don't, I don't think we feel safe around the police. We don't trust the police. I don't. And I'm white. <laughs> so I can't even imagine how much how much harder it is for our black and brown community. Um, also, I read the city's strategic plan and the budget. Um, Paula, there's a whole page dedicated. That's three minutes. Yes, that's the three minutes. I'm sorry. Okay. All thank right. Thank you. you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, this is Russell Olmstead on the uh, west side, Grand Rapids. Um, I'm a, a member of the leadership team of Equity PAC, as well as I, I serve on the Civilian Appeals Board here in the city. Um, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm calling here just as a city uh, uh, <laughs> resident. I first want to say that I, I support the UCC, the NAACP, and Link Up uh, asking of the city uh, to act on the 130 plus recommendations from various studies, community meetings, and boards that have uh, been submitted over the last five years alone. Uh, we don't need any more to committees formed to compile suggestions from other committees that were formed to co compile yet other suggestions from other committees. We need action. And specifically, we need structural changes to the GRPD to address concerns raised in the deployment study in the 21st century policing reports. Chief Payne, you've, you've been on the job for a year plus now, and you've been a part of the department for 30 years. You should already have these types of plans in place to be implemented right now. Um, the commitment, we also need a commitment to uh, uh, open public meetings. Uh, for negotiations uh, to change the existing collective bargaining agreement with the police unions. I know that the city has said that we need buy-in from both parties, but I want to offer a suggestion around that. Uh, as city representatives, you can and should actively seek input and feedback from the people that you represent on this issue uh, when these contracts are negotiated. You, you need to have input from the city to know what we want. You don't need permission from the partnership from the union in order to do that. You can start doing it tomorrow, and it violates nothing regarding union contracts or negotiations. So please don't use bargaining as a collective bargaining as a shield uh, uh, on this issue. You can you can take decisive action and bold leadership right now on it. Um, uh, also, ongoing input and support uh, around community plans for uh, uh, for strategies and tactics of how the GRPD uses uh, their policies and implements their policies and procedures, and definitely expanded funding for the OPA, uh, the Office of Public Oversight, Office of Oversight and Public Accountability, 
to a national standard of 3% of the police budget. Brandon's doing excellent work. We need him in this position. And the number one reason why uh, oversight offices fail is because of lack of funding. We can't let that happen here. Uh, other things that we can be doing, subpoena power, power to the Civilian Appeals Board. Um, we also need more members from the Civilian Appeals Board. So those of you listening, please apply. Apply right now. Um, we uh, Other immediate actions the city can take, um, uh, commit to reallocating the funds from the GRPD to the charter mandated 32% of the budget. Um, uh, uh, don't, uh, um, uh, we need a detailed breakdown of the GRPD uh, budget. Right now in any public documentation, the $55 million Russell, plus Russell, budget is one page. Three that's three minutes, All right. Russell. Thank you. Caller, can you please uh, lower the volume on your computer? Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Your time um, starts now. Okay, thank you. My name is Taya, and I live in Grand Rapids. Um, I'd like to echo the other callers. Uh, defund at 32%, reallocate the funds to communities of color, remove the charter amendment, no new cops, and more transparency, especially regarding the budget breakdown. You know the rest. Um, I live on the west side now, but I used to live on the south side on Lafayette between Hall and Franklin. And let me tell you, that is like two different cities. I can tell you exactly why they're so different. Um, lack of funding, lack of support, lack of care, and over-policing on the south side. Uh, just within the last few decades, we supposedly abolished segregation, and we act as though we righted our wrongs. We act like this is some issue from the past, but we still have segregation in this city. Our home is segregated. Our streets and our schools are segregated. The police play a key role in keeping segregation very much alive in this city and in this country. The wheels of defunding and dismantling the police are already in motion. The other commissioners need to get on board with Jones and calling for this, and we will remember who stands with us, the people, your citizens. You can join us and go down in history and stand on this side with us like you say you do, like you, you call for this structural change and you, you, you say it in your campaigns and then right now you sit on your hands and you do nothing. So it's your choice. You can pretend you don't hear us and you can go down with the ship or you can get on board with us. Thank you. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city you live in. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, city commission. My name is Gino Karen Glenn. I am from Grand Rapids. I have lived here since I was three years old. Thank you for your time and for listening to me. I would like to say that I think that the police department should be defunded and resources um, must be redirected to uh, black communities and schools and places where black folks are really protected. I was recently educated about the inception of the police department in the United States, and I did not realize that it was created to protect property from liberated enslaved people. Um, and I think that we should really be keeping this in mind. Um, Brianna Taylor was born and raised in Grand Rapids. If they stand to protect and serve us, um, I don't understand why we were tear gas at the protests, uh, made fearful while we were pushed, while we were hurt. And I simply would like to say, please redirect the funds used for the police department to communities that need it in social work, in counseling, in shelter, in shelter just please. Uh, that is all I have to say. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts My now. My name is Jones, and I stay in the city of Grand Rapids. And I'm just calling just to um, give some positive energy. Uh, Mayor Bliss, city manager, and the commissioners, Chief saying Everybody else that's working for the city of Grand Rapids, I just appreciate um, being able to walk with the mayor, the city manager, and the chief of police peacefully and with a group of people that really want to see peace and change in the community and just want to see the community um, flourish. Uh, mayor Bliss, I appreciate your work and you saying that you want to see financial equity and 
if anybody's going to really change things after um, a riot and everything else, that it'll be the city of Grand Rapids. And I really believe that. And uh, Commissioner Jones, uh, I don't want to say the fun, but I would say uh, transforming or um, re-imaging the police department. I agree with that. I believe some of that funding um, should shouldn't be in the police department. It should go to doing community outreach or um, just different programs that actually keep people um, bridging the gap between their own communities. I believe that um, minority communities, even Caucasian communities, we have to fix problems within our own communities. And um, those are going to be steps, the way that we can potentially bridge the gap between police and community relations. So um, I commend you on your words, and I stand with you on that. I believe that... Um, Instead of having the police officers working on the dispatch, we should have another um, department or agency or um, someone else handle the dispatch calls. And I believe we should have mental health um, workers and we should have social workers and we should have people that deal with problems that affect the community, especially mental health and um, just having police officers because police officers aren't educators. Police officers are social workers, um, they have to make decisions in a, in a quick minute or a quick uh, 30 seconds or maybe even less than that. So to being able to have someone there to properly handle the dispatcher whenever a crime occurs or the different crimes, um, I just believe it's just different ways that we could handle it and move the city forward. And so this positive energy to everyone on the commission. I hope everyone has a great night and just let's continue to create the positive vibe and be the change that we want to see in the community. And, um, I'm just wishing everybody a peaceful, positive night. That's all I got to say. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Uh, thank you. Um, I want to say that, uh, um, just, you know, reiterating what other people are saying, calling in that um, defunding will be uh, the first step, but uh, what we ask is that you hire no, no more new cops, um, and we demand that the police budget be reduced to 32%, and then eventually to 0%. Um, we are moving towards abolishment, and we don't want anyone to get that wrong. Defund and then abolish the police is where we're headed, and we expect you to head in the same direction, and if you don't head in the same direction, then we will continue to do the things that we're doing to make sure that you do. Uh, we refuse to live in a system that upholds white supremacist ideologies, and we will not stop until no more cops walk the streets, and we will not stop until black bodies, and I mean all black bodies, are safe. Also, none of us trust you to do the work that's necessary that will lead to the safety and wellness of Grand Rapids citizens, and especially uh, black Grand Rapids citizens. The reality is that none of you have enough knowledge to do this anti-racist work. Um, you need to get with us and defund the police to 32% immediately, and then abolish the police system and put those funds into other systems to heal mass trauma in your city and you will be in a larger conversation nationally about healing trauma don't get us wrong we will be in the streets until this happens and i would like to say that there's a protest this friday june 19th at 6 p.m at rosa park circle and i hope everyone listening comes and supports because these people will not pass these things we have to do it ourselves Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please state your name and the city in which you live? You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Good evening. My name is BJ Hallwerda, and I'm from Grand Rapids. And I'm one of the owners of Hallwerda Snoke Sporting Goods. Uh, for the last 41 years, which goes back to 1979, we've been located in Burton Heights. We've been at our current location at 2041 South Division for the past three years. What I would like to bring tonight to you is an emphasis for the need for help from this body. 
we have seen lots of change over the years, and quite frankly, at this moment, the environment in Burton Heights is probably the worst I've seen, definitely the worst that I can recall. Others have shared with you the incredible difficult situation surrounding the Silver Line area near the traffic light at Burton and Division. And while I've witnessed it, honestly, um, it impacts me far less than it does others who are blocked down. I do, however, feel their pain, and part of the reason for my call is to give them support. To have to run a business around um, all of that is an incredibly difficult. Well, we have an issue of urination regularly in our entryway, along with occasionally having to clean human excrement. We also have dealt with people so drunk that you can't wake them sleeping in our entryway. That said, um, worse on our particular block, second block south, are the issues in the back parking lot, including groups of individuals who hang out for hours on end day after day. It has become their turf. Drug dealing, pimps and prostitutes, the screaming of profanities by people high on the drug of their choice. I've had numerous customers and employees panhandled and worse and offered any sort of sexual favor. It's not okay to just park your lot and have someone knocking on your window as they often do. It's unsettling and at times scary. Over time, we've had many individuals come into our business looking for money. Trust me, I've seen it all. To their credit, we have police officers park their patrol cars back in the back of the parking lot as often as possible. They do communicate well with me and uh, attempt to do what they can. When they show up, typically those uh, people scatter here and there. A particular police officer, Don Allen, who is a community police officer, attempts to respond as best he can. Um, I just don't personally believe that the police are capable of handling everything going on here in Burton Heights. We need some social or mental health workers, something. This situation here is simply not okay. We need your help in helping create Burton Heights into a safe, enjoyable place to run a business, for our customers to shop, and for our neighbors who live in the area to feel safe on the streets. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, I wish not to give my name and I am a resident of Grand Rapids. First of all, I would like to say to the people who are concerned about your property in Burton Heights, it seems like you are more concerned with your property than you are with these individuals who clearly need help. You describe these people as drug users, high to the point of unconsciousness, Homeless, they clearly need help. They need social services, which can be funded by defunding the Grand Rapids Police Department. I echo what everyone before me has said, and I personally, at the protest, had an experience with the police department before anything was escalated to the point of violence or throwing things or tear gas. As we marched, we were met with police officers on bicycles who surrounded us, gone behind their bicycles, use their bicycles as battering rams to hit people, push them to the ground, continue to walk over them. I was thrown on the ground by a man that was three times my size. Luckily, people caught me, and I did not fall to the ground completely. I had to pull a police officer off of this woman because he had caught her, caught her, her with, her, with his bike. His bike was hooked onto her shirt, and he was just, like, throwing her all over the place, and I had to help her. This isn't something I should have to do. This is something that should not have to be done. People shouldn't have to protect other people from the police. We were literally were there marching against police violence, and we were met with so much violence. When we asked the officers what they were doing, they said, we're here to protect you. And we told them we did not need protection. We were all perfectly safe. And then they started attacking us. It just makes no sense that you need these police officers. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Sarah Beth. Um, I live on the west side of Grand Rapids. I have been in Grand Rapids for the vast majority of my life, um, and I absolutely love the city, so that's why I'm calling. Um, I've seen it going through growing pains, and I've seen it 
have a history of racial profiling, and I'm calling on behalf um, of the police force and asking to defund it. Um, I'm asking that the police uh, budget is reduced from 39% uh, to 32% by July 1st, and that those funds are reallocated to public services for communities of color. Um, we're hearing a lot of that in the calls here, and all of the issues I'm hearing from other neighborhoods boil down to not having funds to being looked over by city budgets. But if we were to allocate those funds in those neighborhoods, it would solve so many of the issues that other callers are calling in for. Mayor Bliss, I have emailed you multiple times this week, and each time I've gotten back that you are supporting the it can't wait policy. Um, I've looked into it, I've sat on it, I've read it a few more times. And at the end of the day, I'm forced to reckon with the fact that it can't wait is nothing more than policy waiting to be abused. The language is incredibly vague. That if that is the only step that we're taking, it's going to form regression, it's going to form backfire. More action needs to be taken in defunding the GRPD is the only option that allows for that change to occur. Yes, there's a larger system. Um, we can talk about systemic racism all day long, um, and none of us are calling believing that defunding the GRPD will completely eradicate that issue in Grand Rapids. However, we're running a marathon, and we need to get off the couch. And thus far, I haven't seen that happening from everything that I've heard from this commission. I'm calling to ask that the GRPD budget is reduced to 32% by July 1st, and that those funds are reallocated to services for communities of color. And I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Hello, caller. You're on the line with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. My name is Asar Marchand, and I live in the city of Kentwood. Hello, Mayor, Commissioners, and City Manager. I am calling to ask that the GRPD's budget is reduced from 39% of the city's budget to the charter's minimum allowance of 32% by July 1st, and that those funds, roughly $9 million, are reallocated to public services, communities of color. I also ask that the commission immediately begin looking into removing the charter amendment that the GRPD hires no new cops and that the GRPD's internal budget is be released to the public. Thank you. Thank you, caller. The Hello, caller. Can you mute your computer, please? Yes. Can you can you mute your computer, please? Thank you. Can you please state your name and the city in which you live? You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Lorena Aguayo Marquez, and I'm calling in here. Um, and I'm, I live in the film ward, and I'm calling. Um, to ask that the Grand Rapids Police Department budget uh, to be reduced to 32% by July 1st, and, this funds, uh, and the funds to be relocated to communities of colors, um, including trauma, therapy, and healing of the case of violence, especially on the third ward. That war has not been invested for such a long time. Um, so really, really for you to invest on the third ward. Um, and I also ask the commission to start a process to remove the charter that requires any percentage of the city budget to be spent on the police. That is key. Let's, you, know, let's, you want action? That's an action item we could also do um, right away. We could um, move that uh, and take it along. And also the, the graduates police department must hire no more new cops, um, not for the community policing, not for the oversight, and then the GRPD's internal budget must be released to the public. I also want to add um, regarding the police and the city transparency and accountability. I know the moment the cosecha uh, as for the FOIA papers, and when we got it, it was all it was all basically all black, right? It was scratched out. We couldn't even see that. To be transparent, I also asked for publicly to um, for the city 
where you want to be accountable. This is a great opportunity to, to be accountable. To point out all the activities regarding the protests on May 30th, everything that has to be done that the, the police department did or did not do for the safety of the city and our residents. We want to blame the residents, but they're not making their police department accountable. You want to make the people accountable? Um, boy, on the department, and let's see um, who is accountable for that. And also, I want to use the rest of my time to acknowledge uh, police brutality or police brutality by the Grand Rapids Police Department, and especially for because of Cavazier Phillips. So the rest of my time is a moment of silence for all that. Thank you, caller. Hello, caller. Can you please mute your computer? Yeah. Yeah. Can you please state your name and the city in which you live? And your time starts now. Hi, my name is Stephen, and I live in the city of Grand Rapids. And I wanted to throw in my name and my vote to defund the Grand Rapids Police Department and in favor of reallocating those funds to communities of color, as is outlined by communities, by organizations in the community that have been doing this work for many years, such as Link Up, Urban, Urban Core Collective, and the NAACP of Grand Rapids. I also call for an amendment to the city's charter by the end of this year, no later, to, to decrease the amount that can be utilized for police spending from 32% down to zero and to begin to funnel all of those funds, again, into public services that will benefit communities of color. I also want to echo everybody's sentiment as to the transparency regarding the police budget and how it should be released to the public because we have a lot of opinions and we have a lot of ideas on the ways that these things should be reallocated and to hold that, to withhold that is almost as bad as holding a private meeting like y'all did this past week, not including the public, um, which should never happen again. So it seems that you have a lot of work and you can't just put together an office of transparency and then proceed to be intransparent with what you're, what is going on in these meetings. Uh, to the point of the Burton Heights conversation, I think that that's a perfect example, again, as everybody has been saying as to how necessary it is to take money from the police department and put it back into these communities. And as somebody who has lived in East Town for a while now, I also have to bring up the fact that this is what gentrification looks like. This is what the effects of gentrification look like. People in their communities who are displaced and essentially edged out by people who are taking jobs, who are raising rent, who are making living situations even more for these people than they already are being made by the city. Um, I'm no different living in East Town and in Grand Rapids in general. I benefit from the gentrification that has happened, but I think that it's important to consistently bring this up in conversation because it's not going to go away. And this is something that we need to be thinking about for the future when inevitably it seems that Burton Heights owners are in the process of trying to do this again. We have a chance to change that. We have a chance to make things right by these people who are being displaced and edged out by people, frankly, by people like me who are seeking something that that is different than what is already consistent and how we can not be complicit in this. And business owners, there are communities out there, organizations out there who are doing this work who want to help if you want help, I suggest reaching out to these people because thank, we cannot count you, on the council caller. members to help. That's that's three minutes. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is J.R. Martin. I live in Grand Rapids on Anishinaabe land, and I'm calling to echo and amplify comments that have been made tonight about the urgent need to defund and abolish the Grand Rapids Police Department. Not only must the GRPD's budget be reduced to the minimum allowed in the charter, any charter that maintains 32% of city funding for a police department is a charter that allocates 32% for people who point guns at black children 
for systemic anti-Black violence and abuse of communities of color. As others have said tonight, that violence is foundational to the institution of policing. It cannot be reformed. For that reason alone, the charter has to go. The money needs to be reallocated to resources for Black communities and others who need it. And the Grand Rapids Police Department has to be defunded, disarmed immediately, and disbanded. I would urge anybody who hasn't already to read an opinion piece that was published in the New York Times last week by Miriam Kaba, titled, Yes, We Mean Literally Abolish the Police. As she writes in the article, there is not a single era in United States history in which the police were not a force of violence against Black people. She goes on to say, people like me who want to abolish prisons and police have a vision of a different society built on cooperation instead of individualism, on mutual aid instead of self-preservation. What would the country look like if it had billions of extra dollars to spend on housing, food, and education for all? This change in society wouldn't happen immediately, but the protests show that many people are ready to embrace a different vision of safety and justice. And along those lines, with respect to Burton Heights and the comments that people have made tonight, I just want to briefly echo points that people have made on this call and also in the comments on Facebook Live, which is to say everybody deserves housing and public housing and public resources would address these issues that other callers have alluded to. That money could come directly from defunding the Grand Rapids Police Department. Defunding the GRPD is the first part of the solution and only the first part. The GRPD needs to be defunded, disarmed, and disbanded. As city commissioners, you have an opportunity to respond to the demands of this moment in history. We all have that opportunity and that obligation. And at this moment, the demand is for abolition, not reform, abolition. There's no progressive police department. There's no safe police department. The GRPD has to go. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. Please state your name, the city in which you live, and your three minutes starts now. Hi, my name is Christine Gilman. I'm a resident of East Grand Rapids, and I've worked in the city of Grand Rapids for over 30 years now. Well, commissioners, I hope you can view this as an opportunity, a historic opportunity to be part of change long overdue in the United States. This is a great opportunity to put Grand Rapids, Michigan in the national news for a positive reason for a change. It is long past the time for racial equity. I ask, as many callers have before, for you to decrease the police budget to 32% now and then to amend the charter to further decrease the budget. Please use this money to bring peace to the community. What brings peace? Positive relationships with neighbors, jobs, quality neighborhood education, quality health care for physical and mental health. I hope that you will allow the residents of our black and brown communities to trans transparently take part in this decision making. Uh, I hope you take advantage of this opportunity for historic change and I yield the balance of my time. Thank you, caller. Mayor Bliss, that was the final caller. Thank you, Danielle. Okay, commissioners, uh, we uh, have to go back to the item that we tabled. And so I'm gonna take us back to our ordinances to be adopted. Uh, and I'm gonna take us back to the first ordinance, which is our budget ordinance. Uh, and so what I think I'll do is uh, I'll read that one more time. And if for folks who maybe uh, weren't listening in during that section, I'm gonna also uh, turn my light on in a moment. Uh, Maybe I'll have the city clerk read that ordinance and then I'll ask for a motion uh, and then we can kind of reset the stage on the conversation and I'll ask the city manager to uh, have Ms. Claren uh, join us and hopefully they'll have uh, gathered some more information from when we talked about this earlier in the night. Uh, so uh, city clerk, will you read this ordinance? Yes, an ordinance amending section one of the Budget Ordinance 2019-19 for Fiscal Year 2020 Amendment Number 16. All right, and can I get a motion? So moved. Support. Support. 
Thank you. So moved and supported, Commissioner O'Connor. Uh, you want to tee this back up and, and maybe elaborate on the issue that we had concerns about? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Just, uh, there were three items in this budget ordinance that were going to uh, impact our contingent balance. Uh, one of those items is uh, a $1.1 million allocation uh, requested by the 61st District Court uh, to uh, accommodate a budget shortfall at the end of the year, which uh, we have some serious concerns about. And so, uh, yeah, I'll turn to staff to uh, see what they came up with. Okay. All right, thank you, Commissioner O'Connor. Uh, City Manager, do you want to start with this, and then I, it, you can call on others? Oh, I think you're muted, City Manager. Can't hear ya. It's odd because it's appearing as though he's not muted. I, like, I don't see his mute mic on his screen, so I don't know. Asante to the rescue. Do you want to use mine? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. We looked into this matter and we are uh, prepared to talk about the concerns about the budget amendment for fiscal year 20 for 1.1 million. In light of um, your concerns about further amendments and given what has happened in the past, uh, Mr. Secor is on the line and there are three options um that we'd like to, to consider for this evening and before you vote i'd like mr secor to speak to him the first is to amend the fiscal year budget for an amount of around nine hundred and seven thousand dollars i believe <clears throat> the second option would be to amend the fiscal year budget for the $907,000, but also decrease the fiscal year 21 budget by the same amount. So by amending fiscal year 20, we would avoid going into a deficit um, for this year, closing the books on a deficit, and our CFO can speak to uh, the reasons why that is important. And the third option is to uh, deny any, uh, not approve any amendments for fiscal year 20, and we will follow the budget reduction program. Uh, so what I will do is, um, again, ask Ms. Claren, she spoke to the reasons why we uh, would attempt to avoid having the um, courts in, in a budget reduction. And very briefly, Ms. Claren, if you can do that, and then I'll ask Mr. Secor to come and speak to at least the preferences by the court before you make your vote. Uh, certainly, the 907000 would get us to basically scraping bottom in that fund. Um, the main reason uh, we have a financial strategy going on here at the city um, where we, we are concerned about the effect long term on bond ratings. So if we ended the year in, with a deficit in this fund, um, I would get with Comptroller. We would uh, verify with the state whether we'd have to issue a deficit elimination plan if we're unable to reduce that deficit prior to issuance of bonds, which we, we plan to do a bond issue next, um, probably early spring, February, or March, um, that would mean we would have to seek special approval to issue from the, the state treasurer to issue bonds. So again, that's another step. We also go through a ratings process when we do this. So we would um, not only have to disclose that with um, our continuing disclosure that's due um, at the end of the year, but also when we go through the rating process for the issuance of new bonds next spring. So um, that's why it's preferable we we clean up FY20 and um, and then address the financial issues in 21. Uh, city manager, you're still muted. I see uh, Mr. Secor has joined us. To, does he want to share any additional detail? He's only by phone. He doesn't have any video. Okay. He's by phone, not by video. So 
Salam. Mr. Secor, did you have anything to add to what Ms. Claren shared? I don't know if your phone is unmuted, but we can't hear you. Maybe you got me now? Yeah, we can. You got me now? Yep. 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 Yeah, okay. Yeah, Mayor, thank you. Uh, I would just, just want to indicate, I mean, this 900000 to $1 million deficit is direct, directly uh, correlates to COVID-19 revenues. It has no way reflect uh, court's expenditures because actually the court uh, will come in on the 2020 budget uh, close to uh 900,000 under expenditures uh so actually the revenue is significantly less like i said directly uh related to uh covid-19 issues i mean uh we didn't completely shut down with the court but uh we significantly had to reduce operations uh which had a direct impact on uh, revenues uh as a result of that we did uh, reduce uh, the 2020 budget uh, over a quarter of a million dollars, uh, some as related to the work share program, which we implemented on June 1st, which will, uh, which has impacted 87 of our employees. So uh, everyone, but uh, except the three judges uh, through July 24th, they're only working a 24 hour work week. I mean, that's had a significant impact as we try to ramp up court operations, but uh, but uh, we're handling that. We also, uh, as a result, uh, reduced uh, court expenditures for 2021, uh, half a million dollars. So I think the court has done pretty much everything that it can do feasibly to maintain operations uh, based on what, you know, what we're faced with. So I don't know what more we can do at this point um, we had no control over COVID-19 and we have no control over revenues. I mean, uh, that impacts uh, I, pretty much, you know, you know, most of the city operations, the state, you know, state revenues and everything else. So it is what it is. But uh, we can't do any, you know, can't do much more at this point. There's no way for us to reduce another $900,000 in the next two weeks. We're running only through. We're only operating, uh, well, staff are, are, we're operating five days a week, but staff are only uh, working 24 hours a week, so. Okay, I'm going to open it up for um, questions and comments from commissioners. Commissioner O'Connor. Uh, Mark was breaking up a little bit on my computer with the three options. Could I just have him quickly state what those were one more time so we can. Our options, uh, city manager. So the, the first is uh, to do the budget amendment for 907000 The second is uh, to ask the courts, well, not ask, we do it, the budget amendment in fiscal year 20 for 97 It's 9-7, and then we come back on July 7th to reduce the fiscal year 21 budget by the same amount. So it will be a budget reduction on the uh, 7th of our next meeting. We would bring back a proposed amendment and we would need to hear from Mr. Secor, his ability to manage to that. He said he couldn't do it in two weeks, but could he manage towards an additional reduction of 900,000 over the next year? And then uh, the third is uh, <clears throat> to take no action and to file the uh, deficit funding uh, plan. So All right, thank you, sir. Mr. Secord, did, uh, you, did you mention if whether or not you'll be able to manage to that over, I heard over two weeks, but I didn't hear what you, your comments about over the next fiscal year. Come on. 
you know, we're already laying six and a half employees off on September 1st, uh, which brings us down to 81 employees. And I, I don't know any way possible with the reductions we've already made that uh, we can incur another $900,000 in reductions in 2021. I mean, I mean, that's not even practical at this point in time. Commissioner O'Connor, and then uh, Commissioner Asasi, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I guess I will just uh, make the motion to uh, to amend the uh, budget ordinance for this uh, particular item number five to the nine hundred seven thousand dollars, with uh, the anticipation that we will uh, expect a budget amendment for the twenty twenty one budget on uh, July seven, and uh, again. Uh, you know, every year they come back and ask for more money from the 61st district court. So if we can't meet budget expectations, we can deal with that at a later date. Okay, so um, Commissioner, just to get this right, uh, I heard a reduction from the 1.1 million down to the 907,000. Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Um, so is there a motion for that amendment? I mean, I'm sorry, is there a support for that amendment? Support. Okay, so uh, what's before us then is the budget amendment with item number five being reduced from 1.1 million to $907,000. Uh, and so that is what's before us right now. Uh, Commissioner Sassi, did you have a question or comment? Um, thank you, Mayor. I just, um, Ms. Claren, can you provide just a little bit more? I think um, you, I know you had said that you were talking to bond council, and I think this is. Um, you know, looking at what's in front of us, I just wanted to make sure that this is coming at the end of the, the meeting. And if you could just discuss a little bit more some of those longer term financial impacts. Sure. Option number three. Option number three. Oh, the, um, if we did. So um, the state requires you file a deficit elimination plan um, if you are running a deficit and um, the other requirement is if your liabilities ex exceed assets. So I'm having, I'm working with Comptroller on that edge of it right now. Um, but when, when you do get into that state, it affects um, you, for every time you do a bond issue, you have to file a continuing disclosure. That is a recap of the financial health of your organization. So if we're unable to pay our bills, we have to note that if we're unable to you know, maintain financial health in an area of our organization. Um, if, if we are in the status of having a deficit elimination plan, when we go to do a bond rating um, next spring, this, this is something that will be discussed in the rating calls. And, um, you know, if we're doing something that's not fiscally sustainable, and we're going through this other process, it will affect our bond rating. Um, I can't tell you right now by how much, but um, you know we do have really strong credit right now at the city. We're at a, a double A right now. Um, you know I have you know good expectation we'll do well tomorrow in our bond sale, and I did confirm that uh, regardless of what we do tonight, it won't affect the sale of the water revenue bonds tomorrow. But it will. It does have a potential to hurt us longer you know, long term as we go into this next bond sale for the, um, you know, anticipated bonds next spring. So um, and, and another step we would have to do if we do have to file a deficit elimination plan is um, if we needed to issue more bonds for any area in our organization, we would have to get special permission from the state treasurer, which is, you know, an additional step and requires us to um, meet other certain thresholds. So, um, you know, at which point they may push back on us and tell us to cover with our, you know, general operating fund as well. So we might be in the same position we are today having to, you know, because we're legally obligated to cover them. So it's, you know, some give and take there as well. Thank you, Ms. Claren. And then earlier in the, early in the conversation, um, colleagues, uh, we talked about obviously different options and then it was discussed about a, a monthly review with us. So I would definitely support that. Um, you know, this wasn't, we, you know, I'm, uh, this goal went, went pretty fast. We had a lot of items. So, um, this was something that we talked at length. So 
Uh, thank you, Commissioner O'Connor, for bringing this up. Um, and uh, um, if, I'm ready to move forward with my vote. Okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. I'll, I'll add um, two thoughts. Uh, one, I'm glad it was reduced somewhat from what was originally proposed. Um, but I, I would like to see two things. One, uh, regular reporting to this body or, or actually to the fiscal committee uh, on the changes being made within the court to comply with and meet the budget that we uh, that we approved as a part of the fiscal year 2021 budget. And then secondly, for the city manager and the comp team to follow up with a more in-depth analysis of um, the court budget, both expenditures and revenues. Uh, Commissioner Lanier, you have a, a question or comment? Yes, Mayor. Um, I don't really want to talk too long about this. Um, um, similar to what Commissioner O'Connor has said, um, this has been like an annual conversation. And so um, I am, like you, Mayor, um, supportive or thankful that it has been reduced, but um, and looking to support what's on the floor now. Um, but grateful that um, there will be a closer review process with um, the conversations happening more frequently as opposed to annually, because I think somehow we need to um, make a shift in this reoccurring um, challenge that we are experiencing financially with the courts. And thanks, um, Commissioner O'Connor, for highlighting this um, during Committee of the Whole this morning. And to Mr. Secor for um, coming out this late evening to have dialogue about it. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Jones or Commissioner Part or Commissioner Moody, any uh, comments, Commissioner Part? I just want to thank my colleague for asking a $193,000 question. Well said. And, and uh, Commissioner, reporting. Um, Commissioner, I will, uh, I will also give you a shout out. I know that you and I have been in a number of conversations with uh, the city manager and our city attorney and uh, Mr. Davis around uh, some court reform uh, issues, as well as decriminalizing a number of uh, offenses. Uh, and I hope that too will be part of our conversation as we talk about the court uh, over the next couple months. So uh, any final questions or comments before the city clerk calls the question on the budget ordinance with the amendment um, to item number five? All right. I need to vote on the amendment first. Yeah, that's what I was gonna mention. Thank you, thank you, Commissioner. So I uh, will vote on the amendment and then we'll go back for the full ordinance uh, adoption. All right, Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. So now the, uh, the full ordinance is back before us with all of the items. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. Get immediate effect there. Uh, yep, can I get a motion to give it immediate effect? So move. So move. Support. So move. Thank you. Moved and supported. City Clerk, you want to vote on that? Yep. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Sassi? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. It carries. All right, commissioners, thank you for that uh, conversation. I think it's an important one that we have and a follow up to some of our conversations from our budget uh, sessions. Uh, so with that, commissioners, that will take us uh, to our comments by commissioners. And I think I'll start the commissioner that it's hard to see right now. And that's uh, Commissioner Moody. Commissioner Moody, do you have any comments as we close this meeting tonight? Yes, I do, Madam Mayor, and thank you. Uh, I want to thank the city manager and his staff for all the work that they do. I want to thank uh, Chief Payne uh, for uh, the opportunity that is set before him. Uh, I want him to understand that 
being in charge of the police is not an easy task, but the opportunity is before him to make reform and to make some things happen. I have received tons and tons of emails from uh, all over and have various conversations with people in the community. I do believe in some reform, uh, and I do uh, have a clear understanding of the 32 uh, percent. And so whatever we come up with in terms of helping reform the police department for the betterment of our city, I'm in favor of. But what I'm not in favor of, and I make this very clear, I'm not in favor of abolishing our police department. I'm not in favor of crippling our police department. We need our police department for some very important things, but I'm in favor of the reforms in reference to what we need to do to build better community relationship and program. I want to make that very clear. And thank everybody for coming in, and that's where I stand. Thank you, Commissioner Moody. Uh, Commissioner Lanier? Yes, thanks, Mayor. Um, and thanks to everyone who provided public comment this evening and um, for the 2,500 plus emails that we've received regarding um, um, police reform. I am appreciative of having gotten those messages and um, hearing your feedback, um, some from near and some from far. Um, you know, and I think as been said this evening, um, there are a lot of nationally we're looking at this issue and, and trying to find solutions. And um, as stated in our meeting earlier, I'm hopeful that we can have, um, as we are considering the feedback that has come in, that we can have um, a strategy that would um, hear, that would include the feedback from the community while also um, trying to meet the needs that we have as a city as well. Um, and I think um, those things come from um, having um, people share their input the way they've been sharing it tonight um, through public comment or through receiving emails and through multiple forums that have been um, shared. I think those are ways to get feedback. And then I know that the police chief is also assembling a, a committee um, of citizens to um, that he could um, get more um, feedback from them as well. And as we were stating earlier, I think the um, A3 process that the city has used in the past allows us to have kind of this um, at a glance um, view of something that is as complex as policing. I think when you're talking about a budget that is um, 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 37 or 39% of the city's budget, that's a, those are a lot of dollars. Um, and so, I don't think it's as easy as just saying what the percentage should be right now um, and and then even how those dollars should be spent. But what I do think is important is that we are um, taking this feedback into consideration and having the necessary conversations with all ranks of the police department, members from the community, and then um, and also taking a look at where if there is programming, I think the the, the citizens and business owners from Burton Heights. Um, those who came forward and, and share their concerns, I think that's a really good example of them sharing that um, there has been active policing happening, but they're not seeing the results that they were hoping to see. And so th I think that's a really good real-time example that we know um, we need a lot of different programs to address some of the issues that it, our community is experiencing. Um, and I'll just repeat some of the things city manager from earlier, just for the public's sake, because I know they don't listen to us all day, um, that I share with you that as you all are considering um, the suggestions that have come before us and via email as well as public comment this evening, that I'd like you to also, as you're talking and engaging the community as well as the PD, um, hear from them on these other items that I've um, heard of. And um, that's, um, how lawsuits, um, well, identifying those who may be identified, who may participate in um, lawsuits um, through the PD um, and making sure we know which staff is um, tied to those lawsuits that are settled or that are lost. Um, that's been a recommendation I've heard of. I know the police chief said earlier when I mentioned the no knock warrants and raids that that isn't a current practice in the city of Grand Rapids. Um, 
So if it isn't a current practice, then how do we make sure that it never becomes one? So I don't know how do we write that into, into what we have to make sure that it, that someone doesn't think that it's a practice because we don't have anywhere that it isn't. Um, I think we, you know, he also mentioned that um, shooting to apprehend versus shooting to kill is another practice that they, um, that they follow. And again, I want to make sure that if that's a practice, how do we make sure that um, we're not shooting to kill if, you know, if that's what they're doing, but not necessarily written. Um, and then I cannot stress enough about um, recruiting um, diverse pools. And I have talked about this since becoming a commissioner. And I think um, like we did with recruitment for women, um, they had women um, from all ranks participate in that recruitment um, effort. And I think that would be helpful to see as we're trying to um, recruit um, candidates of, of color so that officers who are being recruited can see themselves and the people that are recruiting them to come to um, GRPD. Um, I do believe that it's important for us to try and recruit in cohorts as opposed to single-handedly finding people of color and asking them to be the only um, going through a, a, a training process, et cetera, because I know that uh, representation matters and it's, it's helpful to be able to see yourself as you are making some of those decisions. And then I think um, the other piece is making sure that we identify racism as a public health and economic crisis in our city, because I think when we do things like that, when we, when we state what they are and state the obvious, I think it helps us and guides us as, as we're trying to make the right decisions about what our next steps are. And so I want to make sure that we are um, mindful of that as we are trying to address this issue. Um, and I, I do want to also mention, and I think, Mayor, you may have mentioned earlier, that our budget was passed on May 27th, I think. And um, so I know there, in some of the communications that we received, it sounded as if they, um, people were not aware that we had already passed our um, FY21 um, um, fiscal, and it has been passed and, um, already. Um, but that doesn't mean that as we come back and as we reconvene over the next few weeks, or the next few meetings, I should say, that we couldn't amend that budget to make some to implement some of the recommendations that may surface as, as we go through um, a vetting and, and community engagement process um, with those recommendations. Thank you. And I know there's probably other stuff I should be saying, but it's 10.04. I'm tired. I forgot. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner O'Connor? I said plenty to that. I, I'm sorry, Commissioner, did you say no comment? Yeah, I said I said plenty today. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Rapart? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I wanted to thank the 40-some-odd people that called in. I also got 2,500 emails about different police reforms, and uh, those are received and filed. Um, and uh, I do thank the staff for running so hard, particularly those working with the police department and the cannabis justice group too. We got a big, big body of work from them. To, that was uh, a big team working on that. And to my colleagues, y'all are working so hard in various different ways. And that was the longest committee of the whole meeting since I've been a commissioner today, uh, as we sorted that out. Uh, a couple of quick responses to things people mentioned today. I did ask the chief at Public Safety today explicitly about our use of chemical agents and tear gas in the city, and he assured me that that is also something we're reviewing as a part of this time. Um, so that is under review as well. And uh, to my neighbors, you know, I'm going to do my best to keep your the issues you're facing top of mind in these next couple of weeks. Um, and Commissioner O'Connor and I are hoping to talk about it tomorrow. So, like I said this morning, though, I'm I'm ready to reimagine public safety, and I'm ready for a public discussion about how we allocate resources. As a part of that, I think that we can look at what we've done so far, what the options are, what the implications are for those op options. What are we going to do if we have to cut the budget even further? Um, but and then I'd like us. To to set a goal, and in this time, personally, I'd like that goal for us to get to 32%. Um, 
with a realistic timeline. Um, so, and then we got to work together to determine what the plan is. And I know that's not going to be easy. Matter of fact, that's going to might be the hardest work that that uh, that we've done since I've been on the commission. But I think that this time calls for something innovative and new. And I'm ready to do the work to to figure out the path to accomplishing that. So. Thanks everybody for their hard work. What a long day and everybody's input and effort is appreciated. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Sassi. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you to, I had 36 Commissioner Repart people who were called in. Um, thank you to those individuals who reached out to us earlier today. I, I did a Facebook Live just I think that we can, um, we have meetings, but there's also, I think, the opportunity to invite people into these sessions. And you know, I think there's just a lot of, um, you know, some people haven't been engaged or, you know, there's multiple vehicles that they can use. So um, thank you for, for reaching out. Um, I too um, received thousands of emails and I have, um, I don't have a spreadsheet, but I have categorization of the emails and I do look at everyone and I have looked at all of them up until today. Um, I think in terms of responding, utilizing this platform today and or social media that I have in the past, um, signing on, um, signing on from signing on to the link and UCC and um, um, NAACP letter. Um, I, I strongly believe that um, the solutions need to be led here locally in our community. And I think that today was just a reminder of the many meetings that probably uh, a number of us have were on a part of even before we sat in these elected offices. Um, so I am supportive of uh, getting to the national standard for the office uh, OPA at 3%. I too this morning talked about um, getting to that um, charter requirement of or tra charter minimum of 32%. I also this morning talked about um, my concern and, and definitely not support of utilizing tear gas and chemical weaponry in our in our police force. Um, I also talked about staying um, close and understanding the investigation to the officer who is current currently on leave that Chief Payne um, updated on updated us on today. Um, when I ran for office, I talked about quite a bit about public safety and it still remains something very important to me because I think it ties into another one of the areas that is that is near and dear to me is workforce development. So um, I do believe that over policing in our communities undermines our workforce development efforts in a city. And I think we talked quite a bit about that today. So I am I'm I said last year and I will say it again, I do not support hiring more police officers in the Grand Rapids Public or in Grand Rapids Police Department. Um, so that's a lot, but I think that it's been a long day and it's important for people in a world where we only get snippets sometimes, it's important to restate what we talked about. And so thank you, Commissioner Lanier, who who often does that. And um, you know, it's it's 1009, but I still think it's important to discuss that. I want to mention two other things. Um, yesterday the Supreme Court um, ruled that companies do not have the right to discriminate against LGBTQ people in the workplace. And I celebrate that, um, that victory. And that was led, that, that um, was led by a trans woman, Amy Stevens here in the state of Michigan. So it is, it's Pride Month, it's June. And um, I know that a number of celebrations are not being had because of COVID. And I did want to um, to um, acknowledge that and recognize um, Amy Stevens and, and um, that landmark case. I also want to highlight that, and the clerk will probably highlight this as well, um, that last week, um, the Secretary of State, the Michigan Department of State launched online absentee voter application. So while today we talked about marijuana, we talked about policing, uh, we do have elections coming up in front of us, um, and there are just so many other issues that I believe that we need to stay at the forefront of them because I, I strongly believe that they are all tied together. So um, that, I will say good, good night. Thank you to my colleagues. I, yes, this was the longest committee of the whole uh, that I've been part of, and um, but I am committed, and I never want to rush the 
So to staff, um, I'm willing to sit in the seat for as long as it takes on any day to get through the agenda items that we have. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Jones? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I just want to begin by giving a quick shout out uh, to our appointments, uh, to City Manager Washington and uh, Attorney Hitchcock and uh, City Clerk Hondorp and City Treasurer Glavinsky. Uh, they all have been putting in significant work, uh, not just today, but, but every day. And I appreciate it based on where we are in our country and our community. They each have a role, a very critical role that they're playing. And uh, I just want to thank them for their leadership as well as the staff that they oversee uh, for such a time as this. And so I'm grateful for their, their presence in our in our city. I want to reiterate, uh, I too, like the mention by uh, Repart and Commissioner Ayasasi, this belief for this idea of reimagining our police department and, uh, and public safety in Grand Rapids. I think that uh, it goes without saying that uh, anyone who wants to engage in a more substantive dialogue about uh, the reasons why, uh, I think that's that's fair game. Uh, but uh, I would hope that no one would see this as some form of punishment uh, to anyone. And if you want to talk about punishment, we can talk about that too from a historical perspective in terms of those who have suffered. Uh, and I also want to give, um, give another shout out to City Manager Washington for his work and his leadership in uh, helping to procure a thousand jobs for our young people uh, in Grand Rapids. I think now more than ever, now more than ever, we need to uh, not just talk about our commitment to our young people, we need to show our, our commitment to our, to our young people um, because you're talking about a potentially, or obviously the future workforce of our city. And so uh, I know that was no small task and I know that it's work that, uh, it's going to require a lot, and I'm just again, I think we're, I'm grateful for the number of organizations that have stepped up thus far, both those to, who are willing to employ young people as well as help with facilitating the process and, and really perhaps overseeing some facet of this. So, thank you, City Manager Washington, for that. And uh, again, I want to thank my colleagues as well. Very long day, but uh, very much worthwhile. So, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, City Clerk. Yeah, just briefly, um, yes, Commissioner Sassi, we, um, you can re get, apply for an absentee ballot online, which is which will save people a lot of time and um, effort. And I did it and it moved through the process quite quickly. We did uh, mail out applications to every registered voter in the city of Grand Rapids, and they are coming in. Um, but we, we're also preparing to open up the precincts in November or August and November as well. So. Um, we're looking forward to this election season. Also on um, public comments uh, that we received. Um, so according to our, just to, just so everybody knows the, the process or whatever. Um, so if, if we do receive it, according to our standing rules, that's how we put it on. But I'll be working with the mayor's office for those receipts and um, she gave me the report and we'll make sure that's part of the public record tonight of everything, the numbers that were received. So we'll work on that for the, for the public record. So when we, we look back on this date in history, we'll know that there was a lot of public engagement. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, City Attorney? No, Mayor, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, City Manager? Can you hear me, Mayor? Well, I, I can, yes. Okay. All right, I wanna thank um, the staff for all the work that they've been doing during uh, this very um, challenging season in our city with managing both COVID and now all of the um, issues since May 30th uh, that has, has sparked this conversation around reform and equity and, and systemic uh, changes in, in institutional and individual racism. So um, I want to I want to thank them that they, they are they are uh, doing their best to um, continue to uphold their commitment to public service. Many of them, um, we thought there was reprieve after the budget um, with COVID, and now with this, we we have a lot of staff who have just been working tirelessly, both in the police department and outside the police department. I want them to know uh, that I am very appreciative of of all of their work. 
Um, I do want to, to make sure that there, there is a lot of expectation for reform and change. And I am willing to um, very um, deliberately and reasonably um, and methodically go through it, but I, I do not want people to be misled that we can um, do this uh, by the next fiscal, um, by the next um, city commission meeting. Um, my intent is to bring forth uh, the discussed amendments that we've had to the budget around the courts that we'll see a item on the agenda on the 7th for uh, amendment to their budget of about $907,000. Then I shared with the, the commission earlier today about uh, some um, potential repurposing of the police department that will help with uh, additional three staff positions. And the chief will be working on um, bringing back those uh, Policy reviews within 60 days, and, and, and the oversight office will be working on the inventory in the next 30 days. That that is as much as I am prepared to commit to at this point, without further dialogue and discussion with with the department. Um, and I I, I want uh, the chief is going to have to come back and just clarify some issues on public safety. I know that he said something, and, and people have kind of. Uh, summarize um, his, his aspects. We're going to have to, right, he doesn't have to do it here, but I'm going to ask him to use whatever medium he has in the police department, whether that's social media, Facebook, whatever, to, just to clarify the, their current policies um, on de escalation and le use of less than lethal force. But um, $9 million is a significant amount of money to. Um, Try to rebudget, um, and we um, it just requires more careful consideration. Careful consideration. I just don't want the commissioner or the public to be misled to think that 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 is something that we can easily do. Uh, it's going to take some time, and so I look forward to having the conversations. But I want to be very practical about what we can and cannot do, and um, you know, and our ultimate ultimate um, ability is to maintain the safety. Of City and the chief reported that public safety today. Uh, this afternoon, I'm sorry, not public safety. Uh, that we, we've had 17 uh, murders this year, 17 homicides, um, and 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 so I continually try to maintain the balance between uh, ensuring the safety of the community from violence, but also making sure that people uh, are um, not in fear. Of being over police, so we're going to continue to wrestle with that and make sure that um, everyone feels safe in our community at all times. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. And I'll end with just a few things. Um, I'll try not to repeat everything I said this morning, but I do want to. I want to highlight a few things. Um, I, I sure hope that um, individuals who are listening and and individuals who care about this issue, I hope they take some time to uh, review what we talked about this morning and look at the. Um, actions and reforms that were put forward by Mr. Davis from our Office of Public Oversight and Accountability and our police chief and our city manager. Uh, I am very supportive of those recommendations. I do think that many of them are meaningful and they are recommendations that we have heard from the community uh, and they incorporate the recommendations from LinkUp and UCC as well as the NAACP who are really key partners with us in this space. Uh, not just in the past, in the past several years as we've worked on building community and police trust uh, and looking at police reform, but they're going to be instrumental in working with us in the years ahead. I, I too am here to work with my colleagues on the city commission and uh, with the city manager to look at meaningful reform and reimagining of our police department. And I do recognize that that needs to be done very thoughtfully and deliberately with the community. Um, joined in that work. Uh, a couple other things I want to be uh, clear about is that we, and I uh, said again this morning that I support shifting dollars to uh, build capacity and staff within the Department uh, of Public Oversight and Accountability, and I hope that that happens as quickly as possible. And then we requested uh, this morning 
regular updates from both our police chief and Mr. Davis. And so we'll expect to see those at the city commission meeting scheduled on July 7th and August 11th. Uh, and then I wanna highlight a few other things that I know a lot of work went into uh, that we have uh, talked about a lot around this table. And I know, uh, yes, the work we're doing around police reform is a priority, um, but I also need to be very clear that there are, other, uh, un, there are other priorities in our city and that as an elected body, we have to, we have to work on multiple issues at once. Uh, and so the other thing that I want to just say thank you to all of the, uh, the staff, including the city manager, uh, that worked on bringing us forward today, the Youth Employment Initiative. Uh, I think this is a, a meaningful initiative. Again, it was a recommendation that came from uh, organization in our community uh, and said this was a priority to them. And we uh, worked with them to make this happen and our business community. Uh, secondly, I think... Uh, the work that was done today and presented today around cannabis uh, and the social justice policy and work is really meaningful work. Uh, and I feel like it captures a lot of what many of us have said around this table for months now. Uh, so I want to say thank you to the team that worked on that. And then also, we didn't talk about it tonight, but I also think that we should make sure that we're sharing our changes to our hyperlocal uh, policy that was voted on today uh, with a strength and commitment uh, through our procurement to support minority and women owned businesses. Again, those are those are all all things that are intertwined. A lot of what we do, uh, they may seem disconnected, but they really are, are tied to a lot of our priorities, not just within our strategic plan, but also uh, related to the equity work that we're doing. Um, so I just want to make sure that I highlight those before the end of the night. Uh, and then also just add my thanks to all of the staff who I have seen, uh, especially over the last three and three and a half months uh, with COVID, as well as the uh, police reform work, working uh, overtime. Uh, they're here every day on the weekends, in the evenings. And I just want to say thank you, thank you to all of them for their work. Uh, so with that, commissioners, we will call it a night and we will adjourn. And I'm sure I will uh, talk with all of you soon. Thank you.